After running for a few minutes, Lucia wailed in grief. Why did she say she was on Luxury Street? Couldn't she have said something closer? Lucia was about to go crazy. Why was she so stupid when it came to Dalen? Lucia ran for her life. She was only halfway there when she got Dalen's second phone call. Where are you? Dalen's low and dignified voice sounded. Lucia tried to slow down her breathing and said, I'm just changing my clothes. I'll be done soon. I'll give you a call after I've changed my clothes. Dalen leaned back lazily on the leather chair and crossed his legs. A third of the window was lowered. No matter how hard Lucia tried to conceal it, he could still hear her heavy breathing. After hanging up, Dalen opened his phone tracking software and saw the moving red dot that showed him Lucia's location. Dalen did not keep an eye on Lucia's whereabouts all the time, but from the looks of it, she had lied to him. Lucia saw Dalen's car, so she stopped running and walked slowly while pacifying her breathing. Her hands covered her beating heart. When she arrived in front of the car, Lucia deliberately walked in front of Dalen with a leisurely attitude. The car door was open, and Spencer was standing at the side looking straight ahead. Lucia first looked at Spencer's expression, then looked at Dalen's inside. Dalen looked at her without changing his posture. His eyes were calm. I was just trying on clothes. Sorry I made you wait for a long time, Lucia said as she climbed into the car. And you were alone? Dalen asked. Yeah, answered Lucia. Why didn't you buy any clothes? Dalen gestured to her empty hands. Lucia blinked her eyes, trying her best to look normal when she lied. I couldn't find anything that suited me. Besides, what kind of clothes can you buy in an hour? Dalen stared at Lucia without saying a word. The pressure was too great. Lucia was about to break into a sweat. She unconsciously swallowed. You're telling me the truth? Dalen asked calmly. Lucia became even more flustered. What truth? What I just said was the truth, Lucia argued. Just now, you lied. I can tell by your face, said Dalen, without changing his expression. Lucia's heart skipped a beat. What did she look like when she told a lie? Could Dalen see through her with a glance? Or should I send someone to investigate to see whether you're lying? Dalen's black eyes stared deeply at her face. Lucia was shocked. In her heart, she was angry. She didn't know that marrying such a powerful man was going to be so difficult. She didn't have a shred of privacy. If I go investigate, I'll just tie you up. Dalen's cold eyes were filled with danger. Why tie me up? Lucia didn't want anything more abnormal. However, she couldn't imagine what Dalen was going to do either. Why do you think? Dalen asked, with a naughty smirk plastered on his face. I... I don't know, Lucia said, feeling blood rush to her face. Then why are you blushing, hmm? Dalen's eyes shone. Lucia immediately covered her face with her hands and yelled, I'm not! Don't talk nonsense! She didn't want to, but Dalen's gaze made her think of all the naughty things she secretly desired with Dalen. Spencer, look into Lucia's whereabouts two hours ago, Dalen said in a commanding tone. Lucia was startled and immediately said, All right, all right, I'll just say it. She was fuming and her lips were pursed. She looked very unhappy. Dalen's eyes were calm as he prepared to listen to her. I... I went to see a psychiatrist, Lucia finally admitted. Dalen's gaze turned serious. He frowned. Didn't you say it doesn't matter? Why did you go? Lucia sighed. I can't be like this all my life. I know you said you don't care, but I do. Furthermore, I'm like a ticking time bomb that has been tied to your body. I don't know when I will explode. I didn't know what else to do. Lucia lowered her gaze. What did the doctor say? Dalen asked. She said I may be lacking attention. I seem to have been stealing things whenever I was upset about my father. 
So I think the doctor was right, Lucia explained. In that case, I could have treated you, Dalen said. How? Lucia was puzzled. You were lacking love and attention. I could have given that to you. Dalen looked at her with a steady and serious gaze. Lucia's heart was in turmoil as she looked at Dalen with a pounding heart. Was he actually talking about love or something else? Lucia didn't dare to think in that direction. Until now, she still didn't know why Dalen married her, especially if the theory of her being Bianca's substitute was incorrect. But she didn't have the courage to ask. What if she was being sentimental? How awkward was that? Sometimes it's better to be silent. After thinking about it, Lucia smiled at Dalen. Dalen looked at her clean and beautiful smile, and the corner of his mouth couldn't help but rise. When she got out of the car, Lucia realized that they weren't back at the mansion. Raising her head, she saw that it was actually a high-end clubhouse. Dalen, why are we here? Lucia asked. To eat, he answered without further explanation. Lucia pursed her lips. What do you call a man and woman out for a meal together? A date, Dalen responded. Lucia couldn't hide the delight on her face. Clutching her mouth, she took the initiative to lead the way. The rhythm of their footsteps was disrupted as they walked forward and Lucia tripped on the curb. Lucia instinctively stretched out her hand to break her fall. Just as she was about to land on the ground, arms tightened around her waist and Dalen stopped her descent. His chest was pressed against her back. Dalen was so strong he could have used one hand to catch her. Lucia turned around, her forehead almost touching the tip of Dalen's nose. She could feel his hot breath across her face. It seemed to flow along tiny blood vessels into her heart. The rhythm of her heart was thrown into disarray. Why are you always falling? Dalen's low voice carried a sense of power. Because... Lucia's mind went blank, staring into Dalen's eyes. Bianca, who was standing far away and hiding in an inconspicuous place, saw that scene. The hand hanging at her side was clenched tightly. She couldn't wait to strangle Lucia to death. If it wasn't for Lucia, she would have been married to Dalen. Bianca probably regretted nothing more than leaving Dalen. However, the choice to leave Dalen wasn't up to her. Bianca didn't dare to openly deal with Lucia. Just lying on Dalen's bed put her in danger. When Lucia walked out of the office the other day, she was blocked by Bianca. What was Bianca's problem? She actually came to her office again? Didn't she have enough of her last time? But Lucia had to admit her tenacity was quite impressive. However, things were different now. Now that Lucia knew Bianca was Dalen's mother's savior, she couldn't do anything to harm her. Lucia sighed. She did not know what the universe was thinking. Are you still willing to leave Dalen? Although Bianca's expression was calm, Lucia could tell that she was going to ask her many more questions. And why do you think I'd answer you about anything? Lucia asked. What do you mean? Bianca asked surprised by Lucia's response. Destroying marriages is truly immoral, Lucia chastised. I don't care, as long as you leave Dalen, Bianca responded. Really? Lucia asked. Really? Bianca stomped her foot a little to emphasize her point. Then go to hell, Lucia said, starting to turn away. Bianca screamed. You! You! Lucia spun around to face her before she continued drawing more attention to them. Didn't you say that you can do anything you want, yet you dare to negotiate with me? Bianca was so angry that her face turned green. She suppressed her anger and said, I'll give you anything you want. I'm not interested in anything. Lucia purposely made things difficult for her, telling her never to appear in front of her again. Bianca looked like she was about to cry. Why are you so unwilling to leave Dalen? I won't let him go. With that, Bianca turned and left. 
Lucia watched her leave. Could Bianca really help her divorce Dalen? Why was she even thinking about a divorce with Dalen now? He might be very different when it came to him getting his answers, but Lucia felt a slight connection to him already. Or maybe she was just thinking too much. Bianca was really depressed and didn't know what to do. So she went to find Victoria. Victoria's body had just barely recovered, but she allowed Bianca to see her out on the balcony. Seeing Victoria in such a weak state, Bianca asked, Why is your condition so much worse than last time? It's always easy to get sick again, but I'm much better now. It's okay, Victoria said. If I had known you were still recovering, I wouldn't have come. I hope I don't make you tired. I couldn't bear it. Bianca considered backing out of the door and leaving Victoria alone. But what she had to say was important. You came to visit me. How could I not see you? With you worrying about me like this, my body will recover faster. However, I can tell that your mood doesn't look too good either. What happened? Asked Victoria. Lucia, why won't she let Dalen go? Bianca finally gave up and took a seat by Victoria's bed. They're already married, so it's normal. You're the one who should let go, Victoria said. Of course, how could she possibly persuade someone like Bianca? Bianca's face contorted in sadness. I know I shouldn't have left Dalen. Can he give me another chance? This seemingly infatuated begging sounded exceptionally ear-piercing to Victoria's ears. But she smiled and said, Have some tea. Bianca had no choice but to drink a few mouthfuls from her teacup. At this moment, Jerrica walked over. Miss, it's time for you to drink your medicine. Bianca quickly said, I'll wait here. Then I'll come back outside when I'm done. Victoria went inside to take her medicine, leaving Bianca on the balcony. Bianca waited outside for a long time, but no one came out. She was thinking about how long it could take to drink a pill. Bianca could not understand why Victoria had to enter the house to drink medicine. Couldn't she drink it outside? Bianca stood up and was about to go find Victoria, but just as she was about to go to the door, she heard two servants talking. How did Miss Victoria get so sick? One of them asked. It seems that it was because of Mr. Patrick's gunshot wound. Miss got sick because she was so worried, the other said. Bianca, who was eavesdropping, was shocked. Dalen was shot? When? It didn't look like he'd been shot. The servants were talking again. Fortunately, everything is fine now. But why was Mr. Patrick so careless? The other answered, I heard that Mr. Patrick was injured because of his wife. Are you talking about Lucia? That's her. Bianca, who had been listening in the dark, turned around and left, forgetting all about Victoria. Jerrica pushed open the door and entered Victoria's room. Miss Bianca has left, she reported. Good. Since she decided to come, we couldn't have let her leave empty-handed. Victoria leaned against the bed and closed her eyes. Victoria had only found out about Dalen's wound when she overheard Robert and Catherine talking. She had been worried, but luckily Dalen was fine. But she was sure that Bianca would definitely do something reckless after receiving such information. Victoria didn't care what she did exactly, as long as it would cause trouble. Bianca definitely wouldn't have gotten the news for nothing. Bianca was so confused. How come she didn't hear anything about Dalen being shot at from Linda? If her son was injured, how could she be so calm? Bianca decided to mention it in front of Linda. It was fine if she knew, but if she didn't, there would be something to investigate. Bianca went to Linda's house and told her what she'd heard. What did you say? Dalen was shot? When? Linda was so shocked that the cup in her hand almost fell to the ground. I don't know when that happened, but it was definitely a short time ago. And I heard that it happened because Dalen wanted to save Lucia, Bianca said. Linda's expression turned even worse. She had never liked Lucia. She liked her even less now. How could Dalen have hidden this from her? 
Auntie, don't worry. Dylan is fine now, Bianca consoled. When Lucia entered the closet to get her pajamas, she was stunned by what she saw. The closet had been rearranged. Now two-thirds of the space was filled by her clothes. Dalen, on the other hand, only had a third. Why did it increase again? What was Dalen's meaning behind this? What did she need so many clothes for? Could she even wear them all in her lifetime? But girls still like new clothes, so Lucia excitedly walked forward, her hands moving slowly as she gasped in admiration. At the dividing line, her clothes and Dalen's were next to each other. She wondered if her clothes would smell of Dalen. Lucia saw that no one was around, so she sneaked a sniff at Dalen's shirt sleeve. As soon as she put her nose to the cloth, she heard Dalen enter behind her. She immediately flung away the shirt and stood up straight. She stared blankly at Dalen, trying to hide her guilt. Why did you come in? I I came to get my pajamas, she stammered. If you want to smell it, you can smell it. You can smell it however you want, Dalen said with a teasing expression. Lucia's face turned red. She had been caught. Who wants to smell you? You're thinking too much and seeing things. Lucia refused to admit what she'd done and immediately asked, Oh, right. Why did I get more clothes? That way, you won't have to go shopping, Dalen answered. Lucia was stunned. He got so many clothes and all that just to stop her from shopping? Lucia pretended to be difficult, I don't like these things. I like the Gucci brands on Luxury Street, and I'm willing to buy them there myself. So don't buy clothes for me from now on. Lucia said this deliberately. Why was Dalen so controlling? Or was there a side to him that she wasn't able to see just yet? Dalen's expression became even more cold and unsightly. The new clothes here were all designed for Lucia by a top-tier designer. Lucia could feel his disappointment, which made her feel cold. When she looked at Dalen's expression, he was completely unreadable. Lucia felt her anger melting away. Could she be wrong? After all, he was just trying to be considerate and helpful. But the next day when Lucia went to the closet, she found an extra clothing rack stuffed with expensive looking items. They were all Gucci. Lucia ran out to Dalen and asked, Why is there Gucci clothing in the closet? Like it? Dalen asked. I do like it, but it shouldn't be here. Shouldn't it be in their shop? Lucia was puzzled. Then, with a depressed expression, she asked, Did you buy everything in their shop? No. They said these are the most fashionable clothes this season. I'll take back whatever you don't want, Dalen explained. I won't be able to wear all these clothes, Lucia moaned. And, Dalen said, dragging out the reveal to make Lucia more excited. Lucia was stunned. There was more? What else could there be? I bought a few other brands of your liking on Luxury Street. Lucia was stunned. She shouldn't have said anything about her likes or dislikes. Dalen's way of pleasing her or exerting his control over her, whatever it was, was too extravagant for her understanding. Lucia stood still and did not speak. She felt like she had done something wrong. Take this card. When you show it to them, they will know who you are. Dalen held out a business card between his fingers. Lucia took it with two hands, trembling. Her mind had not recovered from the shock of owning a luxury brand. The next day, Lucia went to the shop alone. After entering, she probably wasn't recognized and was received like the usual guests and they offered her a glass of lemonade. After Lucia finished looking through the racks of clothes and bags, she felt that she didn't need to buy anything because she had basically everything she wanted at home. However, Lucia still felt that she should buy a bag. After Lucia picked out a fashionable shoulder bag for herself, she saw a bag on the side and thought of what Cole had said earlier about wanting to buy a bag. So Lucia chose two and paid the bill. She showed the cashier the card that Dalen gave her, looking a little embarrassed. If it didn't work, would they think she was crazy? When the clerk saw the card, his expression immediately changed. 
and even his smile became cautious. Hello, you don't need to pay, he explained. Lucia pointed at the door. Then I'll just go? Yes, please take care. Lucia picked up her bag and ran out. She even looked back several times after running out of the store. She couldn't believe she owned the store. However, she had to admit that she felt like never before, leaving after buying something and not having to pay for it. Yes, there were her stealing bouts, but this time it felt happier, relaxed, normal. Lucia had frequented the store before, but she had never bought anything so expensive. Just a simple bag cost six digits. Who would actually pay so much for something like this? After returning to the office, Lucia placed the wrap bag on Cole's desk. Cole raised his head in a daze. What? He looked at the package again. What's this? Lucia pointed to the logo on the package. Look here! I saw it, but why is this on my desk? Cole was still confused. Lucia was ecstatic to give her friends such a fine bag. She said, It's a gift for you. Okay then, let me see what you bought for me. Seeing the serious expression on Lucia's face, Cole stood up and rummaged through the package. He took out the satchel and was shocked. This is... This is for me? He gasped. Yeah, you like it, right? Lucia asked, proud of how excited Cole was. I like it, but do you know how expensive this bag is? I can't take it. Cole tried to hand the bag back to Lucia. Why? Didn't you say last time that you wanted to buy a satchel? Lucia showed him that she had bought it herself and not stolen it. So what if you bought it for me? It's still so expensive. This is more than all of my family's savings. Go and refund it. If you really want to buy a gift for me, buy a bag that's not even a brand name. Cole was quite frightened. Do you think I bought you a bag for no reason? Lucia asked. Why? I told you to work hard for my company. And you have been. This is a reward, Lucia said. Do you think I'd stop working for you if you didn't buy this for me? Cole could not wrap his mind around the expensive bag. Uh, actually, these two bags are not worth a single cent, Lucia admitted. No money? So did you steal them? Cole was concerned about his friend. No, let me tell you. Lucia covered her mouth and whispered into Cole's ear. Cole's expression changed as he went into a frenzy. I also want to get married. Hurry up and let me get married. You have to find a boyfriend to get married, Lucia reminded him. And it's best to marry a rich one. Cole's face was instantly pulled down because he didn't even have a boyfriend. Meanwhile, Linda went to the castle after hearing about Dalen's gunshot wound. She had a grave and furious expression on her face. The servants didn't know what was going on and only waited for Dalen to come back. Dalen finally returned and got out of the car with a cold expression. Edward ran up to him and said, Mr. Patrick, your mother is waiting for you in the side hall. Dalen walked into the side hall. Linda looked at Dalen anxiously and asked, When did you get shot? Dalen's gaze turned slightly dark as he sat down on the sofa. Who told you that? Why do you care? Why would you hide something like this from me? Who did it? If something had happened to you, how could I have lived? When Linda found out about this, she was especially afraid. She had already lost her husband, and she didn't want anything to happen to her son. It's not serious. I've been healed for a long time. Dalen explained, trying to soothe his mother's worries. Seeing that Dalen didn't seem to care at all, Linda's expression turned cold. Was it because of Lucia? Dalen frowned. It had nothing to do with her. Then why did you get shot now? You were absolutely fine until you married her. I think she has a lot to do with it, Linda yelled. 
Just then, Lucia was entering the mansion after returning early from work. She had just entered the hall and was about to pass the side hall when she heard someone's voice. It was a woman's voice. Dalen brought a woman back? She paused and tried to hear what they were talking about. She had caught both Victoria and Bianca at the mansion before. But who is it now? Linda continued. Are you happy with this marriage? I know that you only married for my sake, but I'm telling you, I don't approve of this marriage. Hearing this, Lucia walked into the side hall without a second thought. Dalen, who is this woman? Lucia burst in angrily, and when she saw the woman sitting on the sofa, she said in disbelief, An older one? Dalen's expression was dark, and the lines on his face were stretched taut. Linda was so furious that her chest was heaving up and down. I... have I seen you somewhere? Lucia asked, surprised that she seemed to recognize the woman. Linda suppressed her anger and said, In the supermarket, you wouldn't let me sit. You accused me of taking advantage of my age. If Lucia couldn't remember, she would remind her. As expected, Lucia remembered. It hadn't happened very long ago, so how could she not remember? Just when Lucia was thinking about why this woman would be at her house, Linda said, Since both of you are here, then I'll be frank. Divorce. Lucia was stunned. She looked at Linda unhappy. Who did this woman think she was? Why should she divorce Dalen? Dalen's expression darkened. He turned around and said to Lucia, Come here. Lucia walked over hesitantly. Just as she moved to sit beside Dalen, she was pulled over by his arm. Lucia landed on Dalen's thigh, and her face instantly turned red. She lowered her voice. What are you doing? In the mansion, this kind of behavior was fine, but not in front of outsiders. Lucia's mind spun. Did Dalen want her to act like she was in love with him for this person? Thus, Lucia wrapped her slender arms around Dalen's broad shoulders and shot a provocative look at Linda. That look made Linda extremely angry. Dalen saw the provocative look on Lucia's face. If they had been alone, he wouldn't have been able to resist the urge to kiss her. With a solemn face, he said, Baby, this is your mother-in-law. Don't make trouble. Mother-in-law? What? Lucia asked, puzzled. However, when she saw the resemblance between Dalen's black eyes and Linda's, Lucia's soft body, which was leaning on Dalen's firm chest, slowly tensed up. Why had he pulled her onto his lap in front of his own mother? She was anxious to get off Dalen. What did it look like doing this in front of Dalen's mom? Dalen said, Stop fidgeting so much, Lucia. He was still holding on to her and not letting go. Therefore, Lucia could not get down. She was so anxious that her face turned even redder. I can't be her mother-in-law. Linda was furious. Lucia's heart was full of regret. This was not how she imagined meeting Dalen's mother. They had already cursed at each other. And just now, she accused Dalen of bringing home another woman. And she had called her old. Lucia lowered her head and bit her lips. Dalen smiled lovingly. There is nothing interesting on the floor. There's no need to look. Lucia looked up and stared at Dalen. Why didn't he tell her? Dalen raised his eyes and looked at Linda. She's been brought up in an entirely different environment, but her upbringing is absolutely perfect. It will take her some time to adjust to our ways of life, but she will soon. You don't have to worry about her or us. Sure, I won't bother with her, but there are some things that I must take into consideration— you must get a divorce. The more contact Linda had with Lucia, the more Linda realized that this girl was not suitable for her son. She was dissatisfied with her every time. Lucia looked at the silent Dalen side profile. It was a lie to say that she wasn't nervous. Facing his mother's pressure, what would Dalen choose? 
Lucia didn't know that Dalen's mom hated her so much and wanted Dalen to divorce her. And what would Dalen choose? This was his mother. I'm only planning on getting married once. Dalen's low and hoarse voice was so clear and heavy in the silent air. It made Lucia's heart feel heavy. Other than looking at the side of Dalen's face, she didn't know what to say or how to react. Are you threatening me? Linda asked angrily. I can compromise on anything but this, Dalen said. Linda thought that Dalen would agree if she expressed herself so clearly. At the very least, he should consider it. And Linda knew his temperament well. Dalen would do what he said. Did she want her son to be lonely and grow old? Linda glared at Lucia, stood up, and left without a word. Lucia immediately left Dalen's arms and chased after her. Mom, aren't you going to stay for dinner? Lucia asked. Linda's back stiffened. She turned her head, unable to believe what Lucia had just called her. There was no joy on her face. Instead, her expression worsened, and Lucia still smiled at her. Linda didn't want to see her any longer, so she turned around and left. Lucia had never been so polite to anyone in her life, but it made no difference. Dalen's mom couldn't be persuaded. Just as she was feeling depressed, she felt Dalen come up behind her. Lucia blushed and said angrily to Dalen, Why didn't you tell me that was your mom? How awkward was it just now? Weren't you smiling just now? Dalen asked with his dark eyes. She was heated up again by Dalen's words. If I don't call her mother, what should I call her? Or don't you like me to call her that? If you don't like it, I won't next time. Dalen didn't say anything and just hugged her. Lucia felt embarrassed. He could hug her, but she couldn't resist. Why are you hugging me? If you don't like that, just say it. It's not like I'll argue with you. What don't I like? Dalen asked. You don't like me calling her mom like that, Lucia said. Dalen lowered his face and said in a low and hoarse voice, My sweet. Lucia's breathing was a little ragged, and her eyes were sparkling. In the next second, all of her chaotic breathing was swallowed. I'm angry, so you're not allowed to kiss me, Lucia repeated. Hmm? Huh? Dalen looked disappointed. Bake me a cake, Lucia commanded. An hour later, Lucia's slim body hid outside the kitchen door, her head peeking into the room. Dalen had rolled up his sleeves, revealing a solid arm. The way he made her cake was really sexy, especially when he exerted force with his arm. Lucia could see that the lines of his muscles were taut. Edward, who was beside him, read the instructions and explained them step by step. After all, Dalen had never made a cake before. People like him, who were born into a noble family, had never even entered a kitchen before. Lucia raised her phone and took a picture of Dalen making cake. But that wasn't enough. She ran in and threw flour in Dalen's face. Lucia was happy to see Dalen's cold and serious expression. Are you happy now? Dalen's narrow eyes looked down at her. I'll tell you when you're done making the cake. Lucia pursed her lips and smiled. Lucia had teased him enough and was propping her face on her hands as she watched Dalen continue. Dalen eyed Lucia's face with anticipation. He reached out his hand to caress her tender face. Lucia's face was slightly hot. She glanced at Edward, who was trying to avoid looking at them, and then swatted away Dalen's big hand in embarrassment. Dalen stopped messing with her and retracted his hand. Lucia hadn't realized that Dalen's hand had flour on it, and now there were streaks of flour on her face. Edward tried his best to not laugh and continued to maintain his good character as a butler. Dalen, Lucia said. Hmm? Do you like how I look? She asked. Yes, Dalen answered. Lucia wrinkled her nose. She was not very satisfied with this answer. 
She was expecting something more. Lucia thought for a moment and asked again, If a girl who looks similar to me appears in the future, will you like her? Nope. Dalen responded easily. Are you lying? You answered without even thinking about it, Lucia said. I don't have to think about it, Dalen said, finally meeting her eyes. Why? You are unique. Really? But my face is unique, isn't it? Lucia held her face. I'm just unhappy about looking so similar to other people. One time, a passerby also said that I looked like a celebrity. Lucia questioned him for a while longer and then really wanted to look in a mirror. There was no mirror in the kitchen, so she took a knife and tried to see herself in the flat metal. The stainless steel was like a mirror, clearly reflecting Lucia's face, including the flower on her face. She was shocked. What is this? How did my face get flower on it? Lucia wiped her face with her hand and it came away white. When she saw the flower, she remembered that Dalen had touched her face and glared at Dalen. You did it, right? Nope, he said, suppressing a smile. No, if you dirty my face, I will also dirty your face. Lucia dipped her hand in an open jam jar and drew lines on Dalen's strong nose and face. Dalen let her draw. Lucia was overjoyed when she finished the drawing and giggled. His eyes were like two crescent moons. The mouth, too, Dalen said when she stepped back. You want me to draw on your mouth? Is this what you requested? Oh, don't blame me if you don't like it, Lucia said. The main thing was that Dalen didn't see how much jam was already on his face. Looking at the color of the jams, Lucia asked, What color should I paint you? Green? Blue? Red? Dalen, what color do you like? I choose? Dalen asked. Of course, I can work with any color, Lucia responded. What kind do you like? Lucia paused to think about it. Hmm, strawberry. Then use strawberries, Dalen said. Lucia sneakily looked at Dalen. I didn't know that you were such a charming man. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't laugh at you. Then she held back her laughter and spread the red gem evenly on Dalen's lips. Finish painting, he asked. The painting is done. Do you want to look in the mirror? <laughs> Lucia, who was laughing happily, was suddenly silenced as Dalen took a step closer to her. He wrapped his arms around her waist and lowered his head to hers. Dalen's mouth tasted like strawberry jam. Lucia didn't let go of him until the strawberry jam was in her mouth and she ate it all. Lucia panted as she stared at Dalen's eyes, her face flushing red. She could no longer speak. Wow. Lucia, who had finally recovered, was furious. How could she have let Dalen distract her from being angry at him? Then she remembered Edward and spun around to look for him and apologize, but Edward had left long ago. Only she and Dalen were left in the huge kitchen. How could you be so bad? Lucia hit Dalen's chest with her fist. How am I bad? Dalen asked, pretending innocence. You only asked about my favorite jam flavor so that I wouldn't argue when you kissed me. Don't think I can't see through your plan. Lucia fumed. But wasn't it delicious? Dalen was unfazed by Lucia's feigned anger. Lucia rolled her eyes. I don't know. I didn't eat it. Then we'll have to try again. Dalen stepped toward her. No! Lucia backed away quickly. Seeing that Dalen didn't chase after her, she leaned on the table and smiled proudly. Then she thought of something, and the smile on her face disappeared. Dalen, does your mom dislike me? She asked. Dalen paused for a moment before answering. No. But she wanted you to divorce me. Lucia looked at Dalen after she said, Do you want that too? Stand there and don't move. Dalen walked calmly around the table, 
never breaking eye contact, until he was close enough to pull Lucia to him. Lucia was held next to his firm chest. Dalen whispered, What did you say? I didn't hear you. Say it again. Dalen looked down at her with a dangerous look in his black eyes. What did I say? I didn't say anything. Lucia would never admit it. You didn't say anything? Dalen looked at her with his piercing gaze. All right, all right, I said. Ah, but maybe your mom is right. Do you dare to say that your mom is wrong? Lucia pouted. You only heard what she said. You didn't hear what I said? Dalen asked. Lucia's face was slightly hot, and her heart was beating fast. Lucia's slender white fingers dug into the buttons on his shirt, as if digging into Dalen's heart. She gazed deeply into his eyes. Dalen continued. She's just angry because she didn't know that I married you, and I told her later. Lucia was stunned. What? She didn't even know? I thought she knew and she was just avoiding us. Dalen, I have always known that you are arrogant, but are you really this cold to your own mother? Why didn't you tell her? If she had come to the wedding, I would have recognized her. If she did, I wouldn't be so ignorant to accuse her of so many things. No wonder she doesn't like me, Dalen. This is your fault. The more Lucia thought about it, the more she felt that Dalen was in the wrong. She stomped her feet in anger. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen while I'm here, Dalen said. Lucia narrowed her eyes at him and asked doubtfully, Really? There's nothing that I can't do, he said with a wink. Lucia wanted to argue with him and say there definitely were things he couldn't do. But in her mind, she wondered if that was true. The simple matter of wanting to leave Dalen's side was easily nipped by Dalen. It was impossible for others to know of his power and force. But Lucia looked to the side, including cake making, because you haven't finished it yet. It might be too difficult a task for you. Just as she finished speaking, Dalen pinched her butt. Lucia blushed furiously at Dalen, who turned around to make the cake. Why are you always pinching me? I'm not a child. Wait, did you wash your hands clean? Is there flour on my butt? After the cake was ready, Lucia ate her piece with a sweet taste in her mouth. The sweetness went from her mouth to her stomach to her heart. It was so strange. Her heart didn't have any sense of taste, so why would she feel it? But eating the sweet cake reminded her of something unpleasant, her distraught relationship with Dalen's mom. Linda was Dalen's mother. And since Lucia was married to Dalen, his mother was also her mother-in-law. While Dalen was dealing with the family's business in the study, Lucia was playing games on her phone alone on the sofa in her room. She was playing absent-mindedly when a person walked into the room. Seeing John walk over, Lucia immediately stopped him. I have something that I want you to help me with. What is it? John asked. Do you know how a daughter-in-law can make a mother-in-law like her? Lucia asked. John was stunned by the question. However, he wasn't surprised when he thought of what had happened that afternoon. Do you think that this is the most difficult problem to solve? Should I talk to Edward? Lucia asked. It's pretty useless to ask a man that question, John answered. Why is it useless? Lucia was curious. Men don't deal with these kinds of things, John said. Why do you say that? Isn't that how they put it on that TV show? They talk about it on a TV show? Lucia went back to her room and started looking for the TV show John mentioned. The first one was about a woman's husband hiding his money and taking it for granted. The daughter-in-law would put up with him for the sake of her child, and her mother-in-law did not like her, so she was bullied. Lucia saw this scene and thought that the character's problem wasn't her mother-in-law, but her husband. This wasn't like Lucia's situation, so it didn't help her at all. In the second TV show, the couple was okay, 
but the mother-in-law had nothing to do all day. The husband was always in the middle of arguments between the wife and the mother-in-law. In the end, the conflict between the wife and mother-in-law grew bigger and bigger. The husband chose divorce. Lucia felt that this one wasn't like her at all either. Dalen was not a weak person. He wouldn't give in to his mother. The third one was even worse. The husband and wife quarreled, and the husband sided with his mother every time, even giving his wife a good slap. This wasn't like Lucia or Dalen. Lucia couldn't even be bothered to keep looking as she lazily leaned against the sofa. Although her situation was different, the reason for the divorce was still related to the mother-in-law. Lucia couldn't help but sigh. She had already started to fight with her mother-in-law at such a young age. Why is my life so bad? Lucia thought. What are you sighing for? Dalen's tall and straight figure entered the room. Even the look in his eyes was intense. Nothing. I just couldn't find a good TV show. Lucia did not intend to tell Dalen what she wanted to find. Did you already take a bath? Dalen's low voice even sounded seductive. Yes, Lucia answered. Didn't I ask you to wait for me? Dalen was disappointed. I was waiting for you. It was you who didn't come back. How can you blame me? Lucia's eyes twinkled. Of course, she didn't want to shower with Dalen, so she showered the moment he left the room. Rinse again. Dalen's voice was low and dignified. Why? Lucia was unhappy and bounced up from the couch. I have the final say, Dalen argued. The next day, Lucia was at the company, still thinking about her mother-in-law problem. She walked around the office and finally Cole entered the room. Don't tell me you're thinking about the business, Cole walked over and asked. What do you need? Lucia asked. This document is for the Vice Director Lowe, Cole said, handing over a thick sack of papers. Vice Director Lowe? How come I don't know him? Lucia was stunned. How could she not know one of her Vice Directors? The one before it was fired by Mr. Patrick. Lowe is the replacement. What is Dalen doing? If it were his company, no one would go behind his back? Lucia found it strange. Cole thought to himself, since the moment Lucia took charge of the company, wasn't Dalen always like this? It was like Lucia was the face of the company, whereas Dalen was the brains. With the amount of work Lucia understood and actually did for the company, the company would have long dissolved. Then why hasn't the vice director Lowe come to see me? No matter what, I'm still the boss of the company, Lucia said. Vice Director Lowe said that he wanted to meet you. Didn't you say that you didn't have time to see him for now? Cole reminded her. Did I say that? Yes, Cole said with certainty. Lucia touched her lower jaw and thought for a while before saying, Don't send any documents to him. Call him and tell him to come see me. All right. Cole turned and went to make the call. Lucia sat behind her desk, waiting for Vice Director Lowe to arrive. After a while, there was a knock on the door and he entered. When Lucia saw the so-called Vice Director Lowe, she was so shocked that she almost fell off her chair. Aren't you a lawyer? Lucia asked with her eyes wide open. Jared Lowe smiled like an elite as he said, I changed my job. Doesn't being a lawyer make money? Lucia asked, still stunned. Not bad, Jared shrugged. Lucia thought, I think it was Dalen's idea. After Jared left, Cole asked him, Do you know him? Lucia took a deep breath. He was the lawyer who made my father's will. How can a lawyer be a vice director? Cole asked. He was very surprised. I'm also surprised. Lucia frowned. Seeing that Cole had to go back to work, she hurriedly pulled him back. Let me ask you something. Tell me quickly. I have to get back to work, Cole said. There's someone I need your help dealing with. I mean, I don't know what to expect of them or vice versa. 
Lucia said mysteriously. Who is it? Dalen again? You've spent quite some time with him now, Lucia. I don't even know the man that well to even think about helping you out with him. Cole was getting tired of Lucia's schemes. It's not him. Lucia shook her head. Well, other than Dalen, who else have you tied up in a rage? If you can't deal with the person yourself, all you have to do is tell Dalen and he will take care of it. Cole thought this solution was obvious, but Lucia didn't always think clearly. The only problem is, it's his mom, Lucia said, looking at him for justification. Oh, that's new. What's your problem with her now? It's a long story. Lucia explained everything to Cole. Do you see now? I have to find a way to make her happy and then fall in love with me. Oh, ho, ho. now you're really someone from the Patrick family. You're even thinking of ways to make Granny happy, Cole teased. Lucia rolled her eyes at him. I already married Dalen. I can't possibly make the family situation even more awkward, can I? Besides, won't you have a mother-in-law in the future? It won't hurt to think about it now. Lucia squinted at him. Then how do you want to win her over? Cole asked. I thought about buying something nice for her, but it seems like she can't possibly lack those things. She can buy them herself. Should I do the housework for her? Don't mother-in-laws like diligent wives? Cole laughed at her suggestion. That won't work. Lucia, the more you sweep the floor, the dirtier it gets. You almost burn the kettle dry. When you clean the toilet bowl, you shatter it. Are you sure you want to do that? I'm just afraid that after you go do housework, Dalen's mother will dislike you even more. Fine, replied Lucia. Then I'll give something to her. But what is she like? I heard from the steward that Dalen's mother believes in Buddha. I could buy her some kind of a Buddha trinket? Lucia said in distress. Why don't you just build a temple for her? Cole said. Should I? Lucia asked, not picking up on his sarcastic tone. In the afternoon, Lucia called the mansion and asked John to accompany her to see Linda. John agreed. However, it was hours later and John still hadn't come. He seemed to be busy with something else when she called him. He had said, Don't come back to the mansion. I'll pick you up. Anyway, it's along the way. Finally, Lucia saw John approaching from a distance. She saw John answering the phone. He seemed to be quarreling with someone, and his face looked angry. Lucia had never seen John like this. When he saw her, he quickly hung up. Madame, then shall we head over now? John asked, trying to smooth over his angry expression with a smile. Are you okay? Lucia asked him. I'm fine. John quickly put his phone in his pocket. Just as the two of them were about to get into the car, a man walked over and started looking wildly at Lucia. Yo, you look pretty good. When he saw Lucia's body, his eyes lit up. So impressive. I like it. John immediately stood in front of Lucia. With a frightened voice, he asked, What are you doing? Hurry up and leave. Why are you in such a hurry? You are the one who asked me here to return the money. Here I am. Lucia was taken aback. John knew this man? How could John know such a person? He didn't look like a good person. What about the money you owe me? John asked, forgetting for a moment that Lucia was there. How about you lend me some more? When I make it big, I'll return it to you with interest, the man said. Zuck, are you really going to do this? John was furious. Oh, come on. You work for Mr. Patrick. This little bit of money is but a drop in the bucket for him. He won't even notice, Zach replied. John had come out to accompany Lucia today because he did not want to discuss these matters with Zach today. He also didn't want to delay Lucia's business. Mrs. Patrick, let's get in the car, John said. 
Upon hearing the address, Zack's previously frivolous face immediately smiled. So this is the young madame, the wife of Daylan. Sorry, I did you know. Please don't take offense. Ma'am, ignore him. Let's get in the car, John said, urging Lucia to ignore Zack and get into the safety of the car. Lucia turned around and got into the car. In the car, Lucia asked, Who is that? You clearly knew him. Yes, he is my brother. John could barely say it out loud. Your brother? He asked you to borrow money? Lucia asked. John nodded and found it even harder to speak. Lucia continued her interrogation. Do you lend him a lot? John nodded again. I gave him all my savings and then borrowed some money from Edward to give him. However, he never returned any of it. I originally wanted to return Edward's money, but who would have thought that he would want to borrow money again? John was both angry and resentful at the same time. How much did Edward lend you? Lucia was suddenly curious. 500,000, John replied, burying his face in his hands. So much? Lucia was surprised, but when she saw John's silence, she knew that it was true. I regret asking him for money. John didn't even know how he'd ever earn enough money to repay Edward. Let me tell you, a gambler is not to be trusted. It doesn't matter how much money you give him. Lucia said softly, not wanting to disturb John any more than he already was. I knew he was being chased by lone sharks. I couldn't bear it anymore. He's my little brother, John said. I understand. However, Edward is really nice to you. Lucia sighed with emotion. John didn't understand what she meant. However, Lucia didn't say anything else and just looked out the window. It was as if her words were meaningless. They arrived at Linda's residence, but Lucia was stopped at the door. Did you tell Linda that I'm here to see her? Lucia stood outside and asked the servant inside the door. Yes, she said she won't see you, the servant responded. Did you tell her that I have something to say to her? Lucia asked. Yes, the servant still didn't budge. John said amiably to the servant, Mrs. Patrick came to see Linda on behalf of Mr. Patrick. It doesn't matter. The madam just won't see you. The servant went inside and closed the door. Hey, why won't she see me? Lucia was dissatisfied. Why don't we go back? John suggested. Lucia was left with no choice but to return home. But she thought of coming back. In the evening, Lucia thought about helping John return Edward's money. So she went to find John. When she walked downstairs, she saw John in the distance. Just as she was about to open her mouth, she saw Edward standing close to John. She felt like she was spying on them. The two of them faced each other without knowing what to say. But from the looks of it, they didn't seem happy at all. Was it because of the loan? Lucia pouted as she secretly observed them. Then, a tall and deep figure suddenly appeared behind Lucia. Lucia didn't notice the man standing behind her. She was watching and listening so intently. Don't worry, just give it to me when you have it, Edward told John. However, the more Edward said this, the more guilty John became. Can I do anything else to make it up to you? You can have part of my monthly salary. It was basically impossible to get Zack to return money. If that makes you more comfortable, then that's fine with me. Edward didn't say anything else and turned around to leave. John was very grateful towards Edward. Lucia, who was hiding in the dark, looked at the smile on John's face and felt that she shouldn't help to return the money. For some reason, she felt this way. Are you done spying? Came a voice from behind her. Ah, you scared me to death. Lucia stumbled forward and almost fell on the ground. 
Dalen was so tall that she had to crane her neck to see his face. Then she said angrily, Dalen, why are you standing so slyly behind me? Then why are you hiding here? Dalen shot back, even though he knew what Lucia was doing. Lucia clapped her hands and stood up, saying, Nothing. I just wanted to find John. After that, I saw John and Edward talking and didn't have the heart to disturb them. So I waited here. Since they are gone, shall we go back to our room and sleep? Dalen's deep black eyes had an indescribable luster. Lucia, are you inviting me to sleep with you? Lucia was taken aback for a moment. Then she clapped her hands together and yawned. I'm so sleepy. I'm going to bed. Why am I so tired today? She continued to grumble as she headed for the room. Lucia went to work like normal the next day. She would never have thought that someone would come to the company to look for her, but apparently someone had arrived and asked to see her. This person was John's little brother, Zach. When Cole told her about it, Lucia still didn't quite believe him. What did you say his name was? She asked for the second time. His name is Zach. Want to see him? Cole asked. Lucia thought for a moment, then said, Yes, but he's only allowed to wait at the company's entrance. She wanted to know what Zach was going to do, if he had the guts to come and find her. Are you going to go to the front and talk to him? Cole asked. Yep. When Lucia walked to the entrance of the company, she saw Zach leaning against the wall. Seeing that she had come out, he pushed off the wall and stood up with a mischievous smile. Mrs. Patrick, I am really sorry you had to come out personally to meet me. Compared to you, these people at the front desk really look down on people like me. When I said that I was very familiar with you, they still refused to let me in. Actually, it was me who told them not to let you in. I won't allow it, Lucia said confidently. Zach had no response. Lucia looked Zach up and down. He was different from the previous time. Last time, he was very casual and tacky. This time around, his hair was styled and he was wearing a suit, which seemed out of the ordinary. Why were you looking for me? Lucia asked. Nothing much. I just wanted to get to know you better. You're really young and beautiful. The most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Zach answered, looking her up and down. When are you going to pay back the money you owe John? Lucia asked. Zach immediately acted like a rich man. I have a lot of money, but I haven't been able to circulate my money well recently. I will give it to him as soon as I have it. Why didn't Lucia believe him? If it wasn't for Zach, John wouldn't have been tricked into giving away his money. So, Mrs. Patrick, what do you think of me? I've been told I'm the most handsome guy around. He asked confidently as he ran his hand through his shiny hair. Sure. Lucia felt that it was better not to provoke him, fearing his irrational character. After she said that, Zack became even more proud of himself. Zack was so excited he couldn't help but ask, Then do you have any intention of supporting me? Lucia was stunned. What the hell? Zack continued, You know, raise me. Aren't there a lot of uh, rich women these days who like to support uh, pretty boys? Besides, I'm very low maintenance, so it won't cost you too much. Well? With great difficulty, Lucia calmed her anger down and said, I would never agree, no matter how low the price. In my opinion, you need professional help for a psychiatrist or something. Will I support you? Are you crazy about money? You look like a little idiot to me. Zach stepped back, but he didn't give up. Let me tell you, you can't just judge a book by its cover. I still have a heart. If I didn't have one, how could I say that? Lucia was stumped. What was this guy saying? Could it be that your heart couldn't be moved? Ah! 
Zach wasn't able to finish his sentence because something hit his face. Clutching his nose, blood began to flow out. Instantly angered, he asked, You actually dared to eat me? He stared blankly at Lucia. If you don't want to die, then scram! Lucia screamed. Fine, but I won't give up. After Zack said that, he ran away with his tail between his legs. Lucia sneered after him. Lucia thought that Zack was all talk and wouldn't dare to come near her again. She definitely didn't expect him to come again the next day. No! She yelled as Cole told her that he was back. Lucia, is he your admirer? Cole asked. Lucia rolled her eyes. Don't disgust me, okay? Is he really that bad? Cole knew that Lucia was prone to exaggeration. You can go down and take a look at his silly costume and that hairstyle. It's shiny and tacky. Lucia spat. Forget it. I still have work to do, said Cole. Lucia thought about it. What if Dalen found out about what Zack was doing? Dalen would definitely be ruthless to Zack. Furthermore, Zack was like a dog that couldn't be beaten away. What to do? When she returned to the mansion, Lucia asked John, What is your brother most afraid of? He's most afraid of not being able to gamble, probably. John was depressed when he thought of his younger brother. What else? Like, something tangible, Lucia pried. John thought for a moment and said, <sighs> When he was young, he was afraid of worms. Does that count? I guess so, Lucia smiled. The next day, Lucia brought a small box of worms from the pet store. The moment the lid was open, the worms inside began to squirm together. Lucia felt goosebumps all over her body. How disgusting. Cole entered the office and said, Your pursuer came again. I personally went to see him this time. He's really greasy. Has he left? Lucia asked. They tried to get him to leave, but he insisted on seeing you, Cole reported. Lucia excitedly took the small box and headed downstairs. Sure, I'll go see him. Zack had changed into a new set of clothes, but it was the same style as before. His eyes lit up when he saw Lucia. Did you fall for my charm, or could you no longer control your feelings? I knew I'd win you over eventually. Lucia watched him blow his own trumpet with an expressionless face. Do you know what my name means? Zack asked. Lucia was stunned. What was he talking about? Zack continued. Zack, it means uh, God remembers. So he indeed does remember to make the CEO in the future. You are talking to the future CEO. Lucia felt like poking her eyes out so she wouldn't have to look at him any longer. You turn around, she ordered. What for? Zack asked. Didn't you want me to provide for you? And now you won't do what I say? Lucia said stubbornly. Okay, okay. I'd love to. Zack turned around and smiled mischievously. Lucia shook her head and sighed. Then she poured the worms down the back of Zack's shirt. She couldn't wait to see Zack's reaction. What is that? Zack asked. Lucia didn't say anything as she backed away, distancing herself from him. Zack felt something crawling on his back. He reached his hand to his back and saw... Ah! He jumped up, wailing like a ghost. Worms! Ah! Go away! Ah! <laughs> Seeing Zack jumping up and down while running, Lucia couldn't help but laugh. Come again, Zack! She called out as he ran away. <laughs> this is too funny. Lucia's eyes suddenly recognized a car parked across the street. She didn't know when Dalen's car had stopped there. Her heart thumped in her chest. There was no longer a smile on her face as she tensed up. She had been seen. The car stayed still, 
and the bodyguard's car behind didn't move either. Even Spencer didn't get out of the car to open the door. The car did not move, nor did Lucia. Finally, Lucia couldn't bear it and moved. She resigned herself to walking towards the car. As she opened the car door, she saw Dalen's face. That cold aura emitted from Dalen's body had changed the whole atmosphere inside. It was chillier. Lucia suppressed her trembling heart and laughed dryly. Dalen, why are you here? Did you come to see me? Why? Can't I? Dalen's calm voice seemed to hide a volcano. Of course you can. You coming here is a uh, pleasant surprise for me. So much so that I wish I could give you a kiss. Then kiss me, Dalen said. Lucia's expression changed. Does she really have to kiss him? Seeing Dalen's cold face, she said, How about we go to my office? Dalen continued to have a cold expression. Lucia looked left and right, but found no one around, so she forced herself to get into the car. She sat on the seat, tilted her face, and kissed Dalen on the lips. Then, with a flushed face, she said, Right? I'm so glad to see you. A single kiss wasn't enough to make Dalen's cold face loosen up. Instead, it became even colder, because Lucia seemed like she had a guilty conscience. How... What's wrong? Lucia asked him. What did I tell you when we were first married? Dalen asked in response. Lucia's body trembled when she heard that. She lowered her head and said, You're not allowed to look at men other than her husband. Did you do it? Dalen's voice was cold. Lucia knew that Dalen's possessive tendencies had come out again. So she quickly explained, Do you know who that person was? It's John's little brother. Dalen looked confused. He came to see you? Lucia nodded. He probably doesn't have any money left to gamble, and John doesn't want to lend any more to him, so he wants to take some money from me. You saw it yourself, so I made him run away in fear of me. Lucia thought about it seriously and said, Dalen, how about we change one of the rules you gave me? This request was too risky. Lucia's gaze glanced timidly towards Dalen. Dalen held a cold attitude and asked calmly, How do you want to change it? Lucia immediately came back to her senses. Mmm, change to not having a physical relationship with a man other than your husband. How about it? You still want to have relations with other men? Dalen's voice suddenly became frighteningly cold. No, no, I didn't mean that, Lucia said. Then shut up. Dalen's expression was cold. Lucia pouted angrily. Dalen saw that she was obedient, so he asked, Why didn't you tell me about John's brother? Lucia didn't answer. Tell me. Dalen frowned. Didn't you just tell me to shut up? Lucia said innocently. Lucia looked at Dalen's fearsome eyes and immediately said, I can take care of myself. Look, he's already run away. He will definitely not come to me again. Dalen looked at her coldly. Dalen, I know you're not happy that I didn't tell you about this, but I didn't need your help. What do you mean? Dalen asked. To be exact, I'm helping John. Dalen frowned and didn't say anything. Lucia took the initiative to lean in closer, hugging Dalen's arm. John is your employee. You should at least help him a little. Help him? Dalen's black eyes focused on her. Isn't my person you? Lucia blushed and pouted. You know what I mean. I'm just a woman you play around with. Dalen picked her up and sat her on his lap. He glared at her fiercely. When did I play around with you? Isn't that what you were doing just now? Lucia asked awkwardly. To me, that's not playing around, Dalen said. Lucia was confused. Then what is playing around? Are you sure you want to know? Dalen's eyes were filled with mischief. You, you? I'm talking about this with you. Lucia's face was as red as an alluring red apple. 
Are you going to help or not? Dalen chuckled at her reaction. Sure. Lucia immediately smiled and asked, Then have you decided how to help? He's addicted to gambling. I heard that the people who gamble are very scary. Shouldn't we just chop off two of his hands and he won't be able to gamble? Dalen asked calmly. Lucia felt that Dalen was even more terrifying than the people who gambled. Dalen looked at her lovable and foolish appearance. With a light in his eyes, he asked, Are you scared? I'm not afraid, but I don't think this method will work. If you cut off Zack's hands, wouldn't John die from sadness? That's still his little brother. That would be brutal, and she believed that Dalen would actually go through with it. What did you call him? Dalen's eyebrows turned cold. Lucia didn't understand why Dalen was suddenly upset and said, I called him Zack. What's wrong with that? Dalen growled. Is your relationship with him so good that you're on a first-name basis? Lucia was confused by Dalen's question and said, This is John's brother. He told me his name. Why did John tell you his brother's name? I happened to bump into John once when I was out, so we started chatting. Lucia felt a chill down her spine as she lied. Dalen was very smart. His eyes were like daggers, capable of dissecting a person's body. He would be able to see through her lie with a single glance. He did not ask any further questions because there was nothing that he did not know. Dalen, you're not really going to hurt him, are you? Lucia panicked. Had she caused something bad to happen to someone else because of her own foolishness? You're not allowed to plead on behalf of other men, Dalen answered. This doesn't count, does it? Lucia was shocked. It does. Then will you hurt him or not? If you say another word, I'll cut off his hand. Lucia pursed her lips and smiled. I knew you wouldn't. Dalen, you're the best. You'll know that I'm in trouble, Dalen countered. What do you mean? Lucia's nerves immediately tensed up in alarm. Stretch out your arms. Dalen commanded. Lucia immediately stretched out her hands. She was now facing the wall, her arms stretched out from her shoulders. Dalen, why do you want me to do this? My arms are getting tired, Lucia wailed. Even though no one in her office could see them, she still felt humiliated. Dalen didn't answer her and she didn't dare lower her arms. Lucia was angered. Dalen, don't go overboard. Is this necessary? I'm the head of a company and you're treating me like this? Where is my respect? Then you can put your hands down, Dalen said in an overly friendly tone. But Lucia didn't dare to put her hands down. Dalen, didn't you say that as long as you're angry, that I could kiss your anger away? Lucia asked unsteadily. Didn't you already kiss me? Dalen asked. Yes, in the car. Lucia responded. Did my anger go away? Lucia finally understood. If he kept getting angry, he'd need more and more from her to calm him down. Then can I kiss you now? Lucia asked pitifully. Being forced to be so forward was truly tragic for her. After she asked, she did not get any response from him. Dalen's long and narrow eyes became like a sharp sword. His voice was low and hoarse as he said, Since you're offering, I'll kiss you until I'm not angry. Then Lucia's mouth was on his. The kiss took Lucia's breath away. It was deeper than any kiss they had shared previously. This was simply world class. Dalen finally broke away and sat on a seat with his legs crossed. His heavy breathing was barely controlled. He suppressed the fire in his heart. Lucia was standing some distance away from the desk, holding a cup of water. Her lips were red and were starting to swell. Why are you staring at me? Lucia asked, feeling embarrassed. Dalen's expression shifted. The flames of fury had been kissed away, but the flames of desire had been aroused, and those flames were much more fierce than the flames of anger. I want you. Now. Dalen's voice was desperate. Lucia's hands trembled, shaking the cup. 
How close is the end of the three-month deadline? Dalen asked. Lucia thought, Why can't you forget about the three months? Before it used to be three months away, but now it's so much closer. Of course, she had hoped that Dalen would forget. I... I mean... Lucia swallowed. Dalen smiled and said with a serious look in his eyes, Don't worry. I can wait. Lucia's heart was pounding. In order to distract Dalen's attention, she hurriedly said, It's time to eat. What do you want for lunch? We can eat here, Dalen answered. The company cafeteria? Lucia was surprised he would stoop so low. Why? Is there something wrong with the cafeteria? Dalen challenged. Nope, said Lucia, but she didn't actually want to go to the cafeteria with Dalen. It caused too much of a scene. How about this then? I can take you out to eat? Somewhere special. Lucia's eyes darted around as she spoke. Didn't you want me to come to the company before? Or are you just using me to gain respect? And now there's nothing left for me to do, you want to discard me? Dalen asked. Ten years ago, there was a bombing here. Bianca said that she saved Dalen's mother here. What? That was here? Lucia looked around in disbelief. Yeah, a lot of people died after the explosion. I was so scared when I saw it on TV. Do you still remember? Lucia was curious. Yes, don't you remember? It was such a big event and we were 10 years old. You don't remember? Cole found it hard to believe. I don't remember, Lucia said, again trying to come up with any memories of the event. Then how did you know about the terrorist attack? Cole asked. I think I heard it a few years ago, Lucia answered, although she'd only heard about it recently from Victoria. A few years ago? When it happened, it was being broadcast everywhere, and everyone on Earth must remember that, Cole said in disbelief. I guess I have forgotten, yeah? But Lucia also thought it was strange. She seemed to not have a clear memory from when she was ten years old. I don't think even you could forget that, Cole said. Lucia thought absentmindedly about the memories of her teens. She only remembered a few things, and that was that her mother had passed away from illness. That was why she had been harboring a sadness in her heart since then. Other natural and man-made disasters really didn't leave any impression at all. Cole had said that the whole world knew about the bombing, but why didn't she remember? How strange. What's wrong? Cole asked when he saw Lucia's expression. Do you really remember the bombing? Lucia asked uncertainly. Why don't I remember any of it? Cole shrugged. I don't know. Well, what do you remember? I remember my mother dying, Lucia answered. Cole thought for a moment and said, Maybe it's because your mother's death hurt you too much, so you don't remember. I've heard of that happening before. I think you're right. Aside from this possibility, there was no other reason Lucia could think of. She was satisfied with the explanation and was no longer conflicted. Dalen's tall and straight figure was standing not far away, silently looking at Lucia standing in front of a jewelry counter. With a smile on her face, she chose various hairpins. The scene of the bomb blowing up everything and the girl who was pressed under the rock replayed in his mind. Her face had been covered with blood, and she was in pain and weak. Every time Dalen thought about it, his emotions pulled at him. With the hairpin in Lucia's hair, she looked at herself in the mirror and saw Dalen in the reflection. She was stunned. She spun around and saw Dalen, who was standing not far away. His expression was distant, as if he was looking at her, but at the same time, not really seeing her. Lucia had never seen Dalen like this. Then Dalen came to his senses and walked towards her. Go ahead, I'm just passing by. Dalen looked at her. Oh, okay. Lucia nodded blankly. Then Dalen turned around and left in a daze. He left 
just like that? Cole moved closer to Lucia's ear and whispered in a crafty voice, Dylan looks at you as if you're the only woman in the entire world. If you say that he didn't fall in love with you at first sight, I wouldn't believe you. Who said that? Lucia blushed slightly. I said, you should have just gone shopping with Dalen. Why did you drag me along? Cole asked, puzzled. I'm a person who's loyal to their friends, unlike some people who run really fast when they hear Jeff's name. Lucia teased. No, when did I do that? Cole asked, feigning ignorance. That day at tea? Lucia said, punching his arm. I don't remember. Cole was shameless. It doesn't matter if you don't remember. I'll help you remember. Lucia and Cole bickered, but all Lucia could think about was why Dylan had come and gone just like that. He didn't look like he meant for it to happen. Was he looking for her? Didn't he know that she and Cole were shopping? She really couldn't figure him out. In the evening, Lucia came downstairs to find something to eat. John walked over, seemingly looking for her. Thank you, young madam, he said with a bow. Thank me? What did I do? Lucia wondered what she had done. For a moment, she didn't remember. Well, it was Mr. Patrick who helped, but I know that if it wasn't for you, you would not have dealt with my brother's matter, and probably wouldn't even know about it. John was very grateful. Lucia finally realized what he was talking about. It's a small matter. Dalen only did it a little. It's nothing. Lucia waved her small hand and said indifferently, But I'm curious, how did Dalen treat your brother? When Mr. Patrick went to find my brother, Zach was already scared out of his wits. Furthermore, Mr. Patrick had already said that those who bet with my brother would be punished. Oh, wow. Was that a threat? Lucia asked, stunned. No one dares to offend Mr. Patrick, John said in a low voice. Lucia sighed. All right, that's enough. You don't have to worry about Zach in the future. As for Edward's money, you should slowly pay it back. Yes. John snapped back to his duties. What are you doing down here? Do you require something? Oh, I would have forgotten if you didn't say something. I'm a bit hungry if you could get me something to eat, Lucia said. Doesn't Mr. Patrick not allow you to eat at night? It's not good for the stomach, John said carefully. It's fine. He's talking on the phone. He doesn't know that I came down to look for something to eat. And I'll finish and be back before he notices, Lucia said with a glint in her eyes. I'm afraid I can't help you, madam, John said. Lucia was puzzled. Why not? I'm on the very strict orders from Mr. Patrick that no food be served late at night, John explained. You just said you were grateful to me just now. Didn't you say you were grateful to me? Then can't you give me something to eat? Lucia pouted. Gratitude is gratitude, and eating is eating. Ma'am, you should go back to bed early so you won't be hungry late at night, John advised. It's not that late. What's the point of sleeping? Are you going to give me some food? Nope, John insisted. If I had known you'd be like this, I wouldn't have helped you. Lucia shook her head and left in a huff. John saw the expression on Lucia's face, but remained firm. The habit of eating at night wasn't healthy for the body. When Lucia walked in the room, her face was still a little upset. Bam! The door slammed shut behind her. She looked up to see Dalen standing there, looking at her. Lucia's heart tightened. She smiled and asked, Have you finished your call? Where did you go? Dalen asked. I was just walking around the castle. She didn't know why he was so concerned. It's not like she could run away. Lucia thought of something and walked up to Dalen. She raised her head and said, Thank you. Dalen was shocked at her change in mood. Thank me for what? You helped John so much, so I must thank you as well. Lucia was flattering him. You really want to thank me? 
Dalen looked at her with a mischievous look in his eyes. Lucia saw his change in expression and immediately jumped away. What are you doing? Dalen approached Lucia step by step. You... What are you doing? As Lucia spoke, Dalen finally reached her and wrapped his arms around her waist, holding her close to his chest. Lucia gasped. With a flushed face and a trembling voice, she said, Dalen, you... She could hardly move. Dalen's low and hoarse voice was by her ear. Since you won't let me have you, then at least give me something. What... what do you want? Before she could say anything, Lucia's face turned red and her breathing became unstable. She was still an inexperienced girl. Dalen whispered hoarsely next to Lucia's reddened ear, and his words made Lucia's face turn red all the way down to her neck. That change made Dalen's body tense. Lucia, let's go take a bath. Dalen was still very close to Lucia, and his eyes were filled with deep emotions. I, it's not like I agreed, Lucia shyly said feeling like she couldn't even raise her head to look Dalen in the eyes. Dalen clicked his tongue and said, Are you saying that you don't want to be this close to me? And yet you're blushing and pressing closer. Lucia's face flushed red to her ears. I'm just... shy. Dalen rubbed his hands up and down her sides. It's only a kiss. Don't be shy. It's common sense that when you like someone... You will unconsciously come closer to her, Lucia thought. Did Dalen really like her? Or was this a bluff? Dalen took Lucia's hand and slowly pulled her toward the bathroom. At the door, Lucia held onto the doorframe, refusing to let go. If I don't want to go further, then we must split up. Let me go have a shower on my own first. Still so shy? Dalen's eyes hid a smile. Lucia's face turned even redder. Then do you agree or not? If you don't agree, then I don't want to bother with you anymore, Lucia insisted. Dalen raised his eyebrows and smiled. Then you go wash first. Lucia quietly took her pajamas and opened the bathroom door. After entering, she stuck her head out the door and looked at Dalen, who was sitting on the bed, lazily leaning on the bed, doing nothing. You won't come in while I'm in the shower, will you? Lucia asked. Nope. I'll be angry if you come in, Lucia threatened, before she shut the door. Dalen squinted at the closed door. He suddenly realized that even such a threat had moved his heart. What a unique woman. Lucia watched the door closely as she washed. Dalen isn't someone who would break his promise, right? Would he go back on his word? Lucia sighed. However, all she could think of was that she resigned herself to taking a bath first. She just couldn't understand why Dalen was so infatuated with her. Lucia looked at herself in the mirror. There was nothing special about her. But Lucia had just finished her bath, and she looked just like a flower blooming in water. She was quite pretty. She wasn't sure if it was the hot water on her face or because she was still shy, but her face was completely red. Dalen stared at Lucia as she came out of the bathroom and said, You have had quite the bath. You look so clean. Isn't that the point? Lucia thought. Pursing her bright red lips, she walked to the other side of the bed. Okay, I'll go wash up. Dalen didn't look at her anymore, stood up and walked towards the bathroom. If he continued to look, he was afraid that he would not be able to resist the urge to pull her into his arms. Lucia went to bed and found the bathroom door open. The sound of water could be heard clearly. She heard the sound of water splashing around and imagined it splashing on his body. Ah! Lucia covered her burning face with her hands. She had to stop thinking like this. Seriously, why didn't Dalen close the door while showering? Knowing him, he must have done it on purpose. Lucia lay on the neatly arranged and spacious bed. When Dalen came out, he saw her on the bed looking cute and yet sexy at the same time. Lucia looked towards Dalen and covered her eyes with the blanket. Why don't you wear a towel? 
she yelled. I'll have to take it off anyway, Dalen answered. With that, Lucia felt the bed sink, and she knew that Dalen had come over. Then the quilt was gently pulled down over her face. She met Dalen's vast eyes. Lucia was stunned. Her eyes were full of Dalen's being. She forgot how to speak. His deep eyes were filled with Lucia. Even her blush had not faded. The back of his hand brushed softly past Lucia's face. Lucia felt shy and nervous under his gaze. She grabbed Dalen's hand and hoped that he wouldn't touch her anywhere else. She implored, Can you turn off the light? Why? The moment Dalen opened his mouth, he realized how low and hoarse his voice was. This sound also startled Lucia, and her breathing became even more unstable. It's too bright. Can you turn it off? I want to see the look on your face. Dalen's eyes were burning. Lucia was hesitant to even think about it. It was because she didn't want Dalen to see her this embarrassed that she wanted the lights off. Isn't it normal to be so shy? Don't be shy. You're beautiful. Dalen lifted Lucia's lower jaw up to him. Lucia found her face hidden in the shadow cast by Dalen. That's pretty good, isn't it? Dalen, you're so close. Lucia's eyelashes trembled and she closed her eyes tightly. She couldn't open her eyes. She was too shy. Wait, wait. Lucia called out to him to stop halfway. Hmm? Dalen raised his eyes. Why did Lucia stutter when she wanted to kiss him? I feel like... I'm not ready. It's just a kiss, right? Lucia tried to relax, but how could she not panic? Lucia woke up in the morning and dressed in the closet. Then she came back and laid in the bed for a long time beside him. He had wrapped himself around her. As soon as she exerted her strength and tried to get up, Dalen wouldn't let her go. Again and again he refused, and still insisted on kissing her. Lucia was shocked to find that Dalen seemed to like staying by her side. She thought to herself, should she think of a way to leave this place before it was too late? Was she going to hide from Dalen for her own life? Why wouldn't he allow a divorce? The thought of divorce was so strong because there was no other way. If it went on like this, she would be smothered by Dalen. Then Dalen's hands relaxed and Lucia turned her head. She looked a little uncomfortable. Now it had really come true, but who would want such a promise? Lucia was infuriated. However, this ambiguous yet warm feeling made Lucia feel slightly at peace. Time seemed to slow down. She stayed with him thinking she was not okay with it, but feeling as if she wanted to be there. Later at breakfast, everything was as normal. Breakfast was nutritious and the servants were kind. As Lucia lifted her cup to drink her milk, she felt pain in her hand. She stared into the cup in a daze and was confused. Dalen stretched his leg and was caressing her leg under the table. Lucia looked over at Dalen blankly, but seeing the look in his eyes, she was so shocked that her cup fell from her hand onto the table. Bang! A loud thud was heard. The milk spilled onto the back of Lucia's hand, even splattering on her face. This? John was shocked. Mum, are you all right? Lucia felt that she must look ridiculous. There's milk on your mouth. Your whole face is messed up. Clean it. Dalen's eyes were calm, but he had to fight to keep his voice even, or else the hoarseness would have betrayed him. How could Lucia have kissed him? Him of all the people? What was she thinking? Was Dalen talking to her like this on purpose? Lucia felt that she could no longer suppress her anger. She felt like she was bearing too much, and Dalen was being cruel towards her. She picked up another cup and poured it on Dalen. The milk spilled on his black shirt. It was a dazzling sight. Dalen's face was dark and amused. John and Edward were indeed frightened. Who? Who would dare to throw things at Mr. Patrick? 
let alone throwing a tantrum. Was Lucia doomed now? Dalen looked at Lucia sharply as milk dripped down his face. You dare to mess with me? Lucia, who had regained her senses, quickly ran to the other side of the table and looked at Dalen in alarm. Isn't it too late to run now? Dalen said. Lucia's heart skipped a beat. You're the one who messed with me first. Tell me, what have I done to you? Dalen asked. You... Lucia wanted to say something, but no words came out. Most importantly, John and Edward were present. How could she say it out loud? Edward brought a towel for Dalen to wipe off the milk. Come here and clean it for me. Dalen looked straight at Lucia. Me? Won't Edward wipe it for you? Lucia didn't want to go over. Where is the courage you used to throw milk at me? Dalen asked coldly. It's gone, Lucia thought. Don't make me say it the second time, Dalen warned. Lucia gritted her teeth, feeling wronged and pitiful. However, she still couldn't resist Dalen's gaze and walked towards him. Edward handed the towel to her. Lucia glared at Edward before she took it. He obviously just listened to Mr. Patrick. Lucia carefully wiped off the milk stains on Dalen's body. Her two eyes were very focused, not looking at Dalen's face. Even if she didn't look, though, she could feel Dalen's gaze on her. This hurts my pride too much, Lucia thought to herself as she wiped her hands. Dalen's anger would definitely not be calm that easily. What should she do if Dalen was still angry? Kiss him again until he's not angry. Lucia was a little regretful now. How good would it be if she could not bear it anymore? As Lucia wiped Dalen, she could not help but wonder what it was she was afraid of. Why did she not dare to stand up to Dalen? Could this be the legendary bullying the weak and fearing the strong? Lucia didn't think so. She slowed down her actions as she was lost in her thoughts. Dalen said in a cold voice, How dare you get distracted? Hmm? Lucia immediately looked at him. Her eyes were filled with pity as she said, Dalen, can I stop wiping? My hand hurts. Really? Why didn't I see you were hurt when you splashed the milk on my face? Although Dalen was still a bit angry, he was concerned. He held Lucia's wrist with his hand. Here? It hurts, Lucia said. Dalen turned over Lucia's palm and found that it was swollen and red. He frowned. Was he too rough last night? Why were her hands all swollen? It was even more softer than he had imagined. Dalen didn't seem to be angry at all when he saw Lucia's swollen wrists. He felt extremely pained for her. He instructed Edward, go and get the ointment for swelling. Edward immediately left. Dalen looked at Lucia's aggrieved expression and asked, why didn't you say anything when you were feeling uncomfortable? You didn't let me speak. Lucia continued to act pitifully. Dalen pressed her down on his lap, preventing her hand from moving. When the ointment was brought over, John was about to apply it on Lucia, but the tube was taken away by Dalen. Hand, he said, holding out his own. Lucia stretched out her red palm and Dalen applied the ointment. Does it hurt? asked Dalen as he looked at her face. No, it's cool, Lucia answered. Use this next time, Dalen said. Lucia was stunned as she looked at her palm. What did he mean? Next time? Next time? Is he kidding? Dalen acted as if he didn't know that Lucia was scared. After applying the ointment, he took the towel that Edward passed to him and wiped his hands. After wiping up, Dalen started to feed Lucia's breakfast. I can feed myself. Lucia felt extremely awkward. Just let me help you, Dalen whispered. Lucia was silent. Of course she could eat. Her other hand was fine. It was not injured. He didn't need to feed her. Definitely not in his lap. But she could only open her mouth when Dalen fed her food. She did not know what else to say. John and Edward walked out of the dining room and John couldn't help but sigh. 
What are you sighing about? Edward asked in confusion. Can't you tell? As long as Lucia acts like this, Mr. Patrick will become a, like a different person. What do you think people will think if they were to see the scene? They would think that Mr. Patrick had gone soft, John said. Edward looked at the scene in the dining room with the calmness of a butler. Lucia can pretty much climb onto Mr. Patrick's head, and he hates that, but for some reason he seems okay with it. So why do you think his mood is so much better? Edward took a glance at John and said, We might not be able to understand this. Indeed, perhaps being married has changed him. That day at the office, Cole felt that something was very wrong with Lucia. Usually, when she came into work, she would either wander around or sit at her desk playing games. But today, she didn't do anything. She just sat there in a daze. Is the computer broken? Cole asked her. Is it broken? Uh, uh no, it's not. Lucia was stunned by the question. If it's not broken, then why aren't you playing games? There's a little pain in my hand, Lucia replied, pouting her lips. What's wrong? Cole grabbed her hand and saw that it was a little red, but it wasn't looking too bad. It doesn't look serious. How did it happen? Nothing. It was a fall, Lucia said, looking down at the ground. Lucia couldn't say what she had done. Not only were her hands swollen, but she was also helpless. She was in a situation and nobody could help her. Lucia sighed resentfully in her heart. Then she stood up suddenly. I'm going to the toilet. Lucia went to the bathroom and sat on the toilet lid playing with her cell phone. Her hand didn't hurt as much when she played on her phone. But after a while, she got bored. So she just sat there watching TV. She'd only watched half of the episode when her phone rang and the caller ID displayed that it was Dalen. Lucia answered, Hello. The moment she said hello, Dalen's questioning voice sounded. Did you fall into the bathroom? How did you know I was in the bathroom? Where are you now? Lucia was stunned for a moment before she asked. Your office, he replied. What are you doing in my office? Are you okay? Do you need me to help you? Dalen sounded concerned. No need. Lucia's body tensed up. She immediately hung up. She believed that Dalen would definitely follow through. He could do anything. Furthermore, it wasn't like Dalen hadn't broken into the ladies' bathroom before. Lucia still remembered it vividly. She pushed open her office door and saw Dalen, who was sitting in her seat. Why are you looking for me? Lucia asked. Why was he always so carefree? Did he not have work? Dalen responded. Your hand is still injured, yeah? I'll feed you lunch. Lucia was stunned in disbelief. My hand is fine. It's hardly swollen anymore. Did Dalen think that she wasn't able to take care of herself? Is this why he had come all the way here? Come here. Dalen lazily looked at her from his seat. Lucia didn't know what he was going to do, so she walked over. As soon as she got close, Dalen pulled her close and she allowed herself to fall into his extremely safe and muscular chest. Lucia's face was red as she touched her nose that had been smashed into him. What was that for? If your hand recovers soon, perhaps we could do that again in the future. Dalen raised his eyebrows. Lucia's brain was slow for a few seconds before she understood what Dalen was saying. She was immediately agitated. I don't need your help. However, she couldn't escape. No matter how much Lucia struggled, it was useless. Dalen looked at her blushing face and breathing heavily. Lucia wondered whether she was weaker than him or if Dalen had immense strength. She glared at him angrily. How could this person be so controlling? Lucia was so furious that she couldn't take it anymore. With bared teeth, she bit towards Dalen's protruding Adam's apple. <clears throat> Dalen slightly raised his lower jaw and groaned. He used his hand to press on the back of Lucia's head and said in a rough voice, You really are my wolfhound. If it was a beast that bit his throat, it would be fatal. However, he was bitten by his wolfhound. 
his wife. Linda had been very upset lately, especially since she had nightmares last night. She dreamed that Dalen was injured because of Lucia, and he was bleeding profusely. That image could not be erased no matter how hard she tried. She had already lost her husband. How could she possibly lose her son? Just as Linda was at her wit's end, a servant came in and she couldn't help but feel irritated. What is it? she asked. Madam, Miss Bianca is here. Linda was even more agitated now. I won't see her. However, when the servant turned around and left, Linda changed her mind. Suppressing her irritation, she said, Never mind, let her in. After a while, Bianca came in with a polite and happy smile on her face. Auntie, I haven't been here for a few days. I've missed you a lot. It would be great if Dalen had your kind thoughts as well. He's been busy the whole day, apparently, Linda complained. Then I'll visit you on behalf of Dalen. I hope you won't dislike me. Bianca thought in her heart, Dalen wasn't busy at all. He was busy being intimate with Lucia. How could that be? I'm glad you came. Linda had once been the wife of a rich family, so she was the picture of a perfect host. After she finished speaking, she could not help but sigh as if she was very worried about something. Auntie, what's wrong? Is there anything troubling you? Even if I cannot help you solve it, I'm willing to share it with you. Please tell me. Bianca had always been sensible in front of Linda. Ah, it's just... Aren't you here because of Dalen? What happened to Dalen? Bianca asked, worry obvious in her voice. I know you always like Dalen, and I believe that Dalen is better suited for you than for that Lucia, Linda said. Bianca loved to listen to these words and couldn't hide the smile on her face. However, she responded by saying, How could that be? Besides, Talon's already married. I shouldn't have such thoughts. It's exactly because he's married that I'm worried. I believe that Talon was forced into this marriage, Linda said conspiratorially. What do you mean? Bianca perked up. Because of the bombing. That day, Talon's father and I were shopping in that mall. I noticed that a little girl had stolen my wallet and I hurried after her. Dalen's father died in the explosion and the bomb destroyed the entire mall, but I was lucky enough to escape. I was saved by the little girl and that little girl was Lucia. What? It was her? Just a few days ago, Bianca had even brought this matter up to humiliate Lucia. But it turned out that Lucia was the smartest person there. Not only did she not expose her, but she had even mocked her. Bianca had an ugly expression on her face. She wanted to physically hurt Lucia, strangle her to death. If Dylan hadn't wanted to repay her, he wouldn't have married her, Bianca whispered. She had never understood why Dylan wanted to marry Lucia. But now, it finally made sense. If Lucia had mocked her in such a manner previously, wouldn't she be able to mock her with the same words? However, Bianca didn't understand why Lucia acted like she didn't know anything. She must be feigning ignorance to prevent others from finding out. Bianca really wanted to see Lucia make sense of the situation. After knowing that she had obtained a priceless bit of information, Bianca left happily. Linda also felt that she had overdone it by telling Bianca this. However, when she thought of Dalen's safety, she felt that all of this was necessary. She couldn't let anything happen to Dalen. Lucia and Cole were just walking out of the office when they heard a burst of laughter from afar. <laughs> Lucia and Cole looked at Bianca, who was laughing so hard that she swayed back and forth. Lucia nudged Cole with her elbow. Was I too rude last time? I felt a little guilty. She was Dalen's mom's savior, after all. Do you think Dalen would have any thoughts about this? This can't be blamed on you. Some people are born to go insane. Cole comforted her. Even though I feel guilty, I'm really happy I said what I had to. Lucia's expression changed. Cole didn't know what to say. 
Bianca walked forward proudly. I know that you two are speaking ill of me, but I don't mind. It seems that you are quite unwell, Lucia said. Why don't I take you to the hospital and have a look at your brain? I'll pay. You are the one who is sick. Lucia, let me tell you, your time has run out. Bianca shrieked. Am I sick? Lucia asked Cole. Really? Nope. Cole shook his head. See? No, Lucia said to Bianca. Bianca was angered by Lucia's contemptuous attitude. If she hadn't come prepared, she would have gone crazy again. Do you remember the time when I told you that I'm Dalen's mom's savior? Bianca asked. Let's see how long you can keep it up, she thought. I already know. You don't need to tell me again. Don't use the excuse of saving her life to wander into mine. Be careful or I'll hit you again, Lucia said rudely. I was wrong last time. Actually, I said it on purpose, Bianca said. What part was wrong? Lucia asked. Actually, I'm not Dalen's mom's savior. Who are you then? What are you talking about? Lucia would not be led astray. Last time she asked Dalen, he had admitted it himself. What was the point of Bianca lying to her again? Lucia turned around and left. However, Bianca immediately blocked her way. Get out of my way! You better be careful or I'll really beat you up. Lucia's face changed. Aren't you curious why Dalen wants to marry you? Aren't you curious why Dalen would want a woman with such a face like us? I'm not curious. Lucia felt that this woman was beyond annoying. If it wasn't for Dalen's mother, she would have beat her up already. Don't be in such a hurry to leave. I'll leave as soon as I finish speaking. I promise I won't disturb you again, Bianca said. You're really not coming to bother me anymore? Lucia didn't believe her. Dalen had been looking for the little girl who had saved his mother a long time ago. And then he found me, but he found the wrong person. It wasn't his fault. But then he found out that I wasn't who he was looking for. So he went on looking, and he found you. Don't you mean that Dalen found the wrong person again? That he's going to find a third person with our kind of appearance? Lucia said. No, Bianca answered. Lucia looked at her. Why not? Bianca looked her right in the eye. Because you are the girl that really saved Dalen's mother. Lucia was stunned for a moment, then laughed. You want to lie to me and get rid of me? Lucia, I know it was you. Why do you insist on continuing your act? But I'll admit, it's pretty good. Who did it? I swear it wasn't me. Lucia was truly furious. If it wasn't you, then why would Dalen have married you? Do you really think that you're so talented and beautiful? Bianca mocked. Lucia was at a loss for words. How could she know why Dalen wanted to marry her? She thought it was love at first sight. What other reason could there be? However, the more she thought about it, the more Lucia was losing her confidence. Bianca continued and answered her own question. Because you are the one Dalen wanted to repay the debt of gratitude to. That's why he married you and didn't marry me. Lucia, you don't have to pretend. It was only because of Dalen's kindness that he treated you well. What is there to be proud of? I pity you. Lucia stood there, extremely disgusted by Bianca's words. Didn't she know that she didn't save Dalen's mother? She didn't need Bianca to tell her that she did something she didn't do. What a joke. However, Bianca's taunting and pitiful expression were very eye-catching, causing Lucia to feel uncomfortable. Bianca left with a victorious smile, but Lucia's mind was racing. Cole saw that Lucia's face did not look good and immediately consoled her. Don't listen to her blabbering here. How could you lie to others about this kind of thing? Bianca wants to see you admit defeat. Don't fall for her trap. I know. Although Lucia said this, she didn't know how to calm down. Lucia had felt this way from the very beginning. She truly didn't know why Dalen married her. But it was strange that she didn't have a clear memory of when she was 10 years old. 
Victoria was the first to ask her. Lucia didn't take it seriously at the time, but she found it hard to remember. When Bianca said she was Dalen's mother's savior, Lucia believed her because she didn't have any impression of saving someone. But now Bianca said the opposite, and that made Lucia doubt everything. But why did she not remember the bombing 10 years ago? Cole said he remembered it clearly. Why didn't she remember? Was it really because her mother had passed away from illness? A car drove by, and Cole pulled Lucia back from the road before she was hit. What are you doing? You were almost hit by a car. Cole, do you think it's possible for a person to lose their memories if they don't remember what happened in the past? Lucia asked. If you don't remember, you must have lost your memories. Why are you asking this? I don't know why, but I keep having the feeling that something happened when I was 10 years old. But I can't remember anything, Lucia said. Didn't you say that your mother passed away due to an illness? Cole asked. Even if my mother died, no matter how sad I was, I wasn't completely oblivious to the world. How could I not know? When we went to the mall, I felt as if I had never been there before. Yet, there seemed to be a blank memory. So I thought, have I lost my memory? This, it can't be. Cole didn't quite believe Lucia's theory. Should I go to the doctor? Aren't there those psychiatrists who bring back memories? Lucia asked. Cole raised his eyebrows skeptically. And if it doesn't work? Lucia sighed. I don't know. Let's go take a look first. The two of them went to a psychological clinic in the afternoon. Lucia became nervous before she even entered the door. Don't be nervous, Cole said, trying to console her. Lucia nodded and entered the door. The psychiatrist made Lucia recline in a comfortable chair. On Lucia's right, there was a small round light bulb. She didn't know what it was used for. Doctor, can you turn this off? She asked. The doctor shook his head. I use this to recover your memories. This is the key. It can make your memories more clear, and you can see the past more clearly. Lucia looked at Cole. Why was it so mystical? Who cares? The doctor began. Relax, relax. Take a deep breath. Lucia followed the doctor's instructions and took a deep breath. You don't have to exaggerate it so much. Just do it naturally. Cole laughed. Go out, the doctor said to Cole. You will disturb the patient. Cole glanced at Lucia, a little worried to leave her in this unfamiliar place. If the doctor pushed her to sleep, would that mean she would be vulnerable? How dangerous was it? It's fine. Go out and wait for me. Lucia noticed Cole's worry and said, after Cole left, Lucia followed the doctor's instructions and slowly closed her eyes. She wanted to close her eyes, but the light was too bright. The doctor continued, Imagine that your body is very light. It's as if you're floating in outer space without any resistance. Then shut off all your thoughts. Lucia had her eyes closed. Her body slowly relaxed and remained motionless as she followed the doctor's train of thought. When all your thoughts are out the door, your mind starts to relax, relax, relax again. And then what do you see? Did something unbelievable happen? The doctor stopped talking. Lucia, who was lying relaxed on the chair, tilted her head with her eyes closed. Her breathing was steady, unguarded. She had fallen asleep. The doctor's face contorted. Hey, get up! He nudged the armrest with his palm. Lucia was so shocked that she nearly sat up straight. Cole, who was outside, also heard the doctor's loud voice and rushed in. What's wrong? What's wrong? Lucia had a blank expression on her face as she looked at the doctor in shock. She didn't know why the doctor suddenly lashed out. Doctor, you have yet to call out the memories in my mind. Why did you wake me up? Lucia asked curiously. The doctor pointed at the door and said, 
Go now. I can't help you. Why? I purposely came here to have you help me recover my memories. Why are you going to chase me away? Lucia didn't understand. I hypnotized you, but you fell asleep. If you don't care, then don't come. The doctor was angry and embarrassed. Get out! Get out of here! Immediately! Immediately! Lucia and Cole were thrown out just like that. What's with your attitude? Lucia shouted angrily at the door. Cole asked, puzzled, You fell asleep? Why? Isn't it possible for me to awaken my memories after I fall asleep? I think this psychologist is a scammer. What a joke. Lucia was filled with rage. She was very angry. Obviously, she was here to recover her memory, and this doctor was kicking her out because he could not do his job right. Cole didn't know what to say to Lucia. Why are you staring at me? Is there something on my face? Lucia was displeased. I'm just thinking whether it's the psychotherapist's fault or yours, Cole explained. What do you mean? asked Lucia. You came here to look for your memories, but you fell asleep? I, I feel a little sorry for that psychiatrist. How much of his self-confidence has been ruined by you? Will he think of you in the future when he is with his patients and be unable to help them? I pity him. Cole shook his head in pity. Lucia was upset. You blame me? He was saying that my body is relaxed, my head is relaxed, my body is relaxed, my head is relaxed. After saying it over and over and relaxing, wouldn't you want to sleep? The doctor said that you're the first one who he hasn't successfully hypnotized. Look at his qualifications and his experience. Tell me, what kind of luck would he need to have met you? Cole said. Lucia glared at Cole. Then what do you think we should do? Find a new one? Lucia was skeptical about finding a new psychiatrist. What a joke. Do you want to find one? If you want to, you need to find one that's famous, Cole said. That's right. This one is obviously not well known. No wonder he put me to sleep. What a big liar. Cole didn't respond to her. Lucia stared blankly into the distance and said to Cole, It's my business. No matter who asks you, don't tell them about what I'm doing. Do you understand? Even Dalen? Cole asked. Especially him, answered Lucia. Why? If there really is a problem, I certainly don't want him to know. Lucia was still thinking about that day when she asked Dalen if Bianca was the girl that saved his mother, and Dalen had said she was. But she should have kept asking, why did you marry me? But she didn't ask, why not? Was it in her heart that she didn't dare to ask? A cool breeze suddenly blew by, lifting Lucia's skirt and ruffling her black hair. The wind was cold on her body. Is winter coming, Cole? She asked. Cole put out his hand and felt the air. It's autumn now. Winter is not far away. Cole looked at Lucia, who remained silent, and he thought of something. Didn't you say you saved Dalen's mother? If you saved her, she should remember, right? Can't you just ask her? Lucia came back to her senses. You're right. Why don't I ask her? It was really stupid of me not to think of that. But then her face fell as she remembered her last attempt to visit her mother-in-law. But Dalen's mother doesn't want to see me. You know, didn't I tell you about when I tried to see her last time? I couldn't even get past the door. Then what should we do? Asked Cole. I'll go again, and I won't leave until she sees me. Lucia wouldn't give up so easily. Cole was impressed with Lucia's stubbornness. Right, if she doesn't see you, then just stand by the door and don't leave until she agrees to see you, Cole suggested. What kind of rotten idea is this? Uh, I don't care, but I'm not going back to the mansion until I figure this out. Lucia placed her hands on her hips. Then what if you still can't enter? Cole asked. I'll figure that out later. After this, Lucia didn't even return to her office, but instead directly went to Linda's residence. 
I want to see my mother, she said to the servant who answered the door. The servant didn't even go to announce her presence to Linda. She simply said, The madam will not see you. It seemed that after Lucia's first visit, the servant had a deep impression of her. You didn't even tell her I'm here. I called ahead, informed her, and she said she would definitely meet with me, Lucia said seriously. The serious look on her face infuriated the servant. It's the madam who doesn't want to see you. I can't help it. After she finished speaking, she walked inside and closed the door. Lucia stared helplessly at the metal door and the wall beside it. She sighed deeply. Should she go back and try on another day? But she felt that Dalen's mom would still not see her the next time either if she came. But she had to see Linda. She was very anxious to know about her lost memories. She had to know today. Lucia stood outside the iron gate and looked at the junction between the iron gate and the wall. Then she looked at the metal on the iron gate. Wasn't that a suitable place for her to step on? Lucia had an idea and started to climb the door. Just as she reached the top, a distant servant ran over with a pale face. What are you doing? Come down quickly. What if she fell down and hurt herself? Although Linda did not like her, she was still the wife of Dalen. If something happened, they wouldn't be able to live with the guilt. What's your name? You want to scare me off? Lucia said in dissatisfaction. The servant could not stop her. It was because he was afraid that if he really scared her, she would be startled to the point of falling down. And then even if he tried to stop her, it would be too late. She had already flipped to the other side of the gate. After Lucia jumped down steadily, the servant's heart finally stopped racing. Lucia patted the dust off her hands and said, I've already entered. Lead the way. The madam will definitely be unhappy, the servant said with a frown. It's fine. I'm here already. I won't make things difficult for you. Lucia patted the servant's shoulder to comfort him. Linda was drinking afternoon tea and looking calm. When she heard Lucia walk in, her hand trembled, causing the teacup to fall in her lap. Linda's face immediately became angry when she saw Lucia. Who let you in? What do you want? Didn't I say that I won't see anyone? Do you not understand? The madam's rage was quite intimidating. The servant lowered his head, not daring to speak. Lucia immediately said, Don't blame him. I climbed over the wall to get in. Linda didn't know what to say. Lucia continued, There was no other way. What else can you do if you don't climb over the wall? You sure are capable of that. Linda had never seen such a person before, and her face looked terrible. She could not believe this was the woman her son had married. You wouldn't see me. I had no choice but to climb over the wall, Lucia replied. Do you even have any sense? Lucia ignored the question and asked, Mom, can I sit down? No, just stand there. Also, I don't recognize you as my daughter-in-law, so don't call me mom. I can't take it. Lucia heaved a sigh of relief. Luckily, she was not told to scram. Linda originally didn't want to see Lucia. That is why she had told Bianca about the past. She clearly understood a woman's jealousy. But never had she expected that Lucia would come here and jump over the wall to get in. If Linda had it her way, she would have thrown her out of the house. But she knew even if she threw her out, she would crawl her way back in. Linda could hardly look at who her son married. Her character was so unorthodox, but she did not mind her attitude. She was right in her place. The more Linda thought about it, the more she felt that Dalen married Lucia to repay her kindness. I already married Dalen. I could at least call you auntie, can't I? That is not bad, is it? Lucia said. You are married to Dalen, but I don't accept this marriage, responded Linda. You're saying that I saved your life, but you don't act like I did. Shouldn't you be good to the person who saved your life? Lucia asked doubtfully. Did you save me? You just happened to steal my wallet, and I was chasing after you to save myself from a financial disaster. It was a coincidence. I won't be grateful to you. I'd rather have died in that same accident with my husband. 
That was Linda's truth. When she realized that she was alive but her husband was dead, she hated the thief. But there was nothing she could do. Since she was alive, she had to think of her son. Naturally, she could not be grateful for the situation. Plus, this thief had even married Dalen, which made her dislike Lucia even more. Lucia stared blankly at Linda. After a few seconds of silence, she asked, Could it be that you recognize the wrong person? The wrong person? I'd know you even if you turned to dust. When Dalen brought Bianca to me, I knew at first glance that she wasn't the girl who saved me. But I didn't say it because I didn't want you to really appear. However, Dalen did find out. I don't even know how he found out. Why did you show up? If you hadn't appeared, Dalen wouldn't have had to repay the debt of gratitude and sacrifice his own happiness. The more Linda spoke, the more agitated she became. She wanted nothing more than to throw the teacup in her hands onto Lucia's body. Lucia stood there motionlessly, her face burning with pain and sadness. Her heart felt as though it had been ravaged, crushed, and it was unbearable. Her heart ached and her eyes were filled with tears. Lucia opened her mouth, but her voice was almost hoarse. Why don't I remember stealing your wallet? Why don't I remember anything about that day? How should I know why you don't remember? Linda scoffed. Lucia felt cold and she turned around and left the room. Whether it was the cold weather or an inner chill, she couldn't tell. What was this? Did she really have amnesia? Why would she have lost her memories? She couldn't recall anything at all. On the contrary, the more she thought about it, the more confused she became. There was no reason for Linda to deceive her. This was the real reason why Linda didn't like her. So this was the reason why Dalen married her. It was to repay a debt of gratitude. Or was it really love at first sight? Now that she thought about it, it was indeed love at first sight. But how could it be if he knew the truth? Lucia didn't go back to the mansion to confront Dalen, nor did she go to the company. She returned to her father's house. She quietly sat at the door, just like the pitiful figure of a daughter who was waiting for her father's late return. Before she decided to go there, she had called Dalen and told him that she was visiting her family's house. It had been a long time since she had been back there. Lucia ate her meal and walked around until she was near the riverbank, not far from the back of the villa, before sitting down. The water was clear and the sky was dark. Her figure reflected in the water. Lucia took off her shoes. Her bare feet touched the water, and the figure in the water was immediately blurred by the ripples. The water was cold, and it made Lucia uncomfortable, but she put both of her feet in the water. She remembered that some people said that when their feet were cold, their minds became clearer, and they would be able to think about things clearly. Maybe she would remember now? This was much more useful than hypnosis. Lucia didn't know how she lost her memory, but she thought about what her father had told her before. Could it have been that time that caused her to lose her memories? Lucia felt like an ignorant child. She had to wait for someone to tell her about her past. All that was left was a helpless sigh. What else could she do? She was suddenly scooped out of the water. Lucia was shocked. Then she saw Dalen, who had placed her gently on the ground, grabbing her feet in his hands and putting them into his suit jacket, wrapping them up. The soles of her feet were instantly wrapped in warmth. When Lucia came back to her senses, she was so embarrassed that she wanted to pull her feet back. But Dalen wouldn't let her. Don't be like this, she complained. How long were you going to keep your feet in the water if I hadn't come? Dalen's expression was cold. His gaze was filled with worry. Lucia pursed her lips and said, I read somewhere that the feet have all the reflexes, acupuncture points, and meridians of the human body's internal organs. Stimulating them will make you more mindful. The book said your feet would be stimulated by cold water, Dalen asked. Yes, Lucia said, with her eyes downcast. Dalen's black eyes focused on her, and he asked with a sharp tone, 
You went to my mother's house and jumped over the wall? Lucia was stunned for a moment. She raised her head to look at Dalen and grinned. News sure does travel fast, doesn't it? Dalen's expression was as cold as ice. He raised his voice. Do you know how dangerous that was? I'm fine, Lucia shot back. Dalen's face was tense. Suppressing his anger, he asked, Why did you go to her house? You know that I jumped over the wall, but you don't know what I went for? Lucia looked at Dalen's expression and he nodded. Then I won't tell you. Lucia, he said in a low, threatening voice. All right, I'll just say it. I did it out of good intentions. You can guess what it was. I wanted her to like me, Lucia said. Dalen didn't know, which meant that Linda hadn't said anything to him except that she had jumped over the wall to come to the house. Presumably, Linda didn't dare to tell Dalen the truth. Lucia could only guess why. Dalen rolled his eyes. Like I said, with me here, everything will be settled. You still want to climb over the wall? The wall surrounding his mother's house was lined with pieces of glass. It was extremely sharp. Even the iron gates were topped with pointy iron spikes. It was impossible to imagine the danger of her falling or hurting herself while she climbed over. How on earth did she dare to act so boldly? Dalen, can I ask you a question? Lucia raised her head. Hmm? He said. If I ask you now, will you answer me? Why did you marry me? Lucia stared at Dalen with expectation and uncertainty about the question she asked. It was probably because she was so confused about Dalen that she could not help but be blunt with him. Dalen remained silent. His black eyes seemed to see through Lucia. Is it too hard to answer? Lucia asked. What did you go to the house for? Dalen asked again. Lucia's gaze slightly drooped down and landed on the black button on Dalen's shirt. Dalen had sensed something was off with her answer, she thought. But why did he ask the question instead of directly revealing the truth? Was it hard for him to say? Dalen stretched out his hand and raised up Lucia's lower jaw, forcing her eyes to meet his. Why aren't you talking? he asked. Close to him, Lucia saw herself in Dalen's black eyes. Her eyes were clear, but she was at a loss because she felt like she was in the vast universe. It made her feel dizzy. Dalen, your mom's wallet wasn't stolen by Bianca, right? She's not your mother's savior, is she? Why did you lie to me last time? Am I the girl who stole your mother's purse? Lucia asked. Is that why you went to the house? Dalen repeated. Lucia let out an exasperated sigh. Why do you keep pestering me about my purpose at the house? Can't you just tell me? Actually, I feel that the answer is of no consequence. Just treat it as satisfying my curiosity. Is that okay? Dalen looked at her and said, It was you. Although Lucia already knew the answer, her heart still sank when she heard him say it. It was as if she had sunk into acid. She felt like she was melting. Her skin was burning. It was so painful. Lucia then asked, When you first married me, was it to repay the debt of gratitude? Dalen continued to look at her. Yes. Lucia turned her gaze and suddenly smiled. Your sacrifice is too great. If it were me, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it. After she finished speaking, she felt an incomparable sense of desolation. She actually had such a strange and profound feeling. She really didn't have the status to mock Bianca. How ridiculous. Then she immediately jumped up, forcefully retracted her feet, stood up from the ground, and angrily pointed at Dalen. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Because if you want to repay a debt of gratitude, then marriage is a pretty extreme way of doing so. Did you ask me? Did I agree? Don't you want to respect my human rights? Dalen's black eyes looked at her darkly, while his black eyes narrowed, but he said nothing. Lucia continued, Well, since the matter is settled, there's no need to pretend anymore. Just do whatever you have to do. 
We can get a divorce. Lucia didn't want to be annoyed with Dalen anymore. She'd found out the real reason why he had married her, and she did not want to deal with it anymore. I've said this many times. It's impossible to get a divorce. Dalen's voice was cold. You married me to show gratitude? How about this? If you really want to repay me with your gratitude, you can give me money and I can live my own life. Lucia looked away. You want nothing but money? Dalen asked. His eyes locked on Lucia's face. Lucia thought, I do want something else, but will it ever belong to me? Dalen's purpose was obvious from the start. The real reason why they married was to repay the debt of gratitude. Humility is a traditional morality. After a long silence, she said, No. Dalen's face immediately darkened and his entire body started to tense. When she saw his expression change, she felt a chill run down her spine. It was as if her feet had turned cold again. Lucia could not stand Dalen's icy presence and said, What? I'm doing this for your sake. Marrying me for such a reason, don't you feel that you're losing out? Why should you bet your life's worth of happiness? It's only been a couple of months. We don't have children yet, so we can settle everything easily. Otherwise, if we wait for a child to come, it will get messy. That would be even more cruel. Before Lucia could finish her sentence, she saw Dalen leaning towards her with a dark expression. She was so frightened that she got up to run away from him. However, before she could even run three steps, she was stopped by Dalen's long arm. Ah! Let me go! What are you going to do? Lucia panicked. Dalen threw Lucia over his thick shoulder and walked into the house gloomily. What are you doing? Let me go! Lucia's stomach felt very uncomfortable on his shoulder. She wanted to struggle free, but she couldn't because Dalen was too strong. Lucia was quite flustered. She didn't know what she had said wrong. Has Dalen gone mad? Dalen, I'm telling you, let me go right now. Otherwise, I won't need your money. Ah! Lucia was thrown onto the bed. You, what are you trying to do? Lucia didn't understand. Dalen answered, You won't ask for a divorce after you have a child, will you? This was not a question, much less a request. Lucia felt that this was just a threat. Dalen, you said you would give me three months. That promise was the only guarantee Lucia had now. But at this moment, Dalen wanted her and needed her desperately. He had to stop her from leaving him. And if this was the only way, then... Three months is no different from now. Dalen looked down at her on the bed. He pressed down on Lucia. Lucia's mouth was agape as she stared at him coming over. Dalen pushed her back onto the bed. Was it because I treated you too well that you challenged my patience again and again? Dalen's expression was twisted by hostility. You were the one who was so controlling. Lucia's chest tightened and her face flushed. I can be more controlling. Dalen held Lucia's lower jaw, his lips moving towards hers. Lucia was mesmerized by him. How could she feel so conflicted? She wanted him to stop, but at the same time she was desperate for him to keep going, to swallow her whole. She tried to get out from under his body, but Dalen was as heavy as a mountain. With his strength, she had no chance of escaping. Mm. Day. Mm. Mm. Lucia surrendered, allowing Dalen to do whatever he wanted. When Lucia was released, she sucked in the fresh oxygen in the air. Her whole body felt warm. Dalen, I can't, she said, before Dalen could go any further. You don't want it? Dalen asked, still gasping for air. You said you would give me three months. Do you feel that I'm not good enough? Are you not satisfied now? Dalen kissed her fiercely. Lucia's mind went blank as she got lost in his kiss. Dalen broke away and asked, Why must we wait for three months? What are you scheming? Do you want three months to escape? 
Who are you waiting for, hmm? Dalen's black eyes were intense. I... I did not. Tears threatened Lucia's eyes as she resisted. You promised. The fear and sadness in her heart made her cry. Dalen's hands froze in place. The hardness in his black eyes gradually faded. When she raised her eyes, Lucia was biting her lips. Tears flowed from the corners of her eyes, and they disappeared without a trace. Dalen's heart ached. Every beat of his heart felt like it was hitting his chest, making him feel numb. The only way to not hurt her was to turn around and leave. But how could he bear it? He straightened up and forced himself to leave. Lucia lay on the bed, feeling powerless against Dalen and her own emotions. Her tears flowed even harder. Lucia curled up on the bed, hugging herself. She could hear the silence of the room. Her mind was a mess. The only thing she could not accept was the impact of the truth. Why was she the girl that had stole Dalen's mother's purse? Why not Bianca? She didn't want to be that girl, but there was no point in regretting it now. Even Dalen admitted that was the reason for him marrying her. Because of this, he had to sacrifice his life's happiness. And she wasn't even allowed to ask for a divorce. Lucia closed her eyes. Her heart was filled with pain and she drifted into an uncomfortable sleep. When Lucia woke up in the morning, she was in a hazy state. Why were the windows so small? The bed was so small? It took her a few seconds to remember that this was her old room and why she was here. She and Dalen had a quarrel and he did not come back after leaving. Actually, Lucia didn't even know why Dalen was so angry. What was so bad about a divorce? Or could it be that Lucia's request insulted Dalen's kindness? Lucia scoffed. Where did Dalen get his kindness from? He was a terrifying and cruel creature from the moment she met him. How else could you force a marriage? The servant opened the door and said, Miss, it's time for breakfast. Nope. Aren't you hungry? He asked. Go ahead and eat. I do not want to eat. Lucia had no interest in eating it. During the day in the office, Lucia could do nothing but stare at the computer blankly for a long time or hold her phone as if she was holding a remote control and constantly switch it on and off. Then she threw the phone on the table and called up Cole. Cole, what are you doing? She asked. Although Lucia was someone who did nothing, she was still his boss. And the tone was so serious, it must have sounded important. Cole immediately jumped from his desk to address Lucia. Any orders for me? Why aren't you using the bag I bought for you? Lucia's clear and beautiful eyebrows were knitted very seriously. This? Cole still overestimated Lucia. I keep it at home, but I'll use it tomorrow. That's good, Lucia said, looking back at her phone. Is everything all right? Cole asked. Yes. Please give me something to do, Cole begged. He was so bored at work. Go and see if there are any documents from Mark Leland that I need to review, Lucia said. Cole had already felt that something was wrong with Lucia today. She hadn't always been like this. Since when did she care about work? Wasn't she here to eat and play? Lucia, are you all right? Cole asked. Lucia looked at Cole strangely and said, Why am I so unwanted? Am I not looking good? Didn't you always say that I don't work properly every day? I want to change. Is there anything wrong with that? Is it because I play games, eat, and sleep every day? Cole, you're not an undercover agent from some unlucky company, right? Although you work for me and we are still very good friends in private, you... Stop! Cole held up his hand to quiet her rambling thoughts. I'll go and take a look now. He turned around and walked towards the door. Wait a moment, Lucia said. What now? Cole said, turning back to her. I think it's better if I go there myself. Lucia stood up and left. Cole was completely speechless. Lucia went to Mark's office. Mark's assistant saw her and was about to say something, 
but Lucia had already pushed open the office door without a care in the world. The assistant's mouth was open, but no sound came out. The moment Lucia entered, she saw another woman in Mark's office. Beautiful looking, fashionable clothes, with a pair of peach blossom eyes. Quite attractive. Mark didn't expect Lucia to come into his office. Moreover, she had entered without knocking, so he was understandably surprised. Is this a bad time? Lucia asked. No one answered her, but she didn't understand why Mark had a strange expression. So she asked the woman sitting there, Which department are you from? I don't think I've seen you before. You don't know who I am. The woman, who was Tracy Parker, could hardly believe it. Eh, I'm sorry, but that company really has so many people. You should know that. I meet so many people every day, so I don't really remember, Lucia said. Lucia felt that this girl in front of her was still young. Logically speaking, she should know who she was, right? Tracy was famous, after all. She leaned over and whispered in Mark's ear. What are you talking about? As the head of the company, can I hear it? Lucia said. Mark didn't say anything. Tracy answered, We're talking about remarriage. So it's about a remarriage? What about it? Whose idea was this proposal? Lucia stopped midway through her sentence. She instantly thought of the idea of remarriage and looked at Mark and Tracy in shock. She already knew that Mark was divorced, so this was his ex-wife. A remarriage? It seems like a sensitive topic, doesn't it? This did not require her at all. Ah, uh ha! -huh. Then you guys take your time and talk. I'll be leaving, Lucia said, backing out. Boss, Mark finally spoke up. What is it? Lucia asked. Why did you come to find me? It's nothing. I just came to visit you. With that, Lucia really left. She walked to a spot not far away, then dodged to the corner and watched Mark's office door, spying on the situation. After waiting for about 10 minutes, she saw the woman come out and leave. Lucia then went to Mark's office. As before, she didn't knock on the door and just pushed it open. Mark, was that woman really your ex-wife? Lucia was completely unaware of how uncourteous her actions were. Indeed, Mark answered. She's so pretty. Why did you get a divorce? Lucia asked. Incompatible personality, Mark said simply. Isn't that the worst excuse for a couple to get divorced? Lucia looked down on him and asked. Mark's patience was wearing thin with Lucia's persistent questions. Boss, what do you need from me? Mark asked this because he didn't want to answer Lucia's question. He wanted her to leave the office. However, Lucia had no idea. Mark, how did you two know each other? Did you use some tricks to force her to marry you? Mark didn't know what to say. Did she really think he was the same as her awful man, Dalen? He didn't want to answer Lucia's question, but if he didn't, she would never leave. Not really. So how did you meet? Lucia asked. We were both students at university. Wow, then she's also a lawyer? Not exactly, answered Mark. Then what does she do? She's in entertainment. She's a celebrity? What's her name? Lucia's curiosity kept her asking question after question. Tracy Parker. Tracy Parker? That was actually Tracy Parker? That's Cole's idol. Lucia had never been enthusiastic about celebrities, so she naturally didn't care about Tracy. However, she knew the name because Cole never stopped talking about her. Haha, <laughs> I'll go tell Cole now. With that, Lucia finally left Mark's office. After Lucia entered the office, she ran to Cole. Do you know who I just saw? Didn't you just meet Vice Director Mark? Cole asked, wondering what on earth could Lucia be talking about. What's so good about him? It's his ex-wife I'm interested in, Lucia said quickly. What about his ex-wife? Cole was even more confused. Do you know who his ex-wife is? Now, don't get too worked up when I tell you. She's the celebrity, Tracy Parker. What? 
Are you serious? Cole stood up abruptly in surprise and joy. Well, are you interested in what I have to say now? Asked Lucia triumphantly. I'm going to ask her for an autograph and a photo, Cole said, heading to the elevator. Lucia pulled Cole back. There's no need to go. Why? Don't try to stop me. This is my dream, Cole snapped. Because she's already left, Lucia said. What? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Cole was furious. Lucia stared at him. Is Tracy Parker more important or am I? You actually dare to be so mean to me for her sake? Of course she is more important than you. Cole pulled on his hair in frustration. End of friendship, Lucia snapped. She turned around and left. Come on, you don't mean that. He had heard her say this countless times. Cole followed her with a face full of shame. Don't be angry, I was joking, Cole said. It wasn't funny. I thought it was funny. All right, just don't be angry. Hm. I'll treat you to lunch. I'll think about it. We'll eat a big meal. <laughs> All right. Cole giggled and asked, When you saw Tracy Parker, did she speak to you? A few words, Lucia answered. What did she say? Cole was desperate for any information Lucia could give him. I just asked which department of the company she was from, and she was surprised that I didn't know her. Nothing else, Lucia said. I don't even know what to say to you. Cole was depressed. He should have been the one to have met her. What's wrong? I feel like Tracy Parker is going to be offended like the psychiatrist. You actually asked her which department she's from? I'm surprised that she even talked to you, Cole said with a pained expression. Okay, but should I know her? Do I need to know the name and face of every celebrity? Maybe I don't want to know her yet, Lucia said disdainfully. Well, you don't want to know her, I think, okay? Let me ask you, why was Tracy Parker looking for Vice Director Mark? Cole asked. She said they were going to remarry, Lucia responded. Oh my God, is this considered gossip? You know, a piece of news from Tracy Parker is worth gossiping about. I didn't know why they divorced. The news from before had split into all sorts of versions. I had heard that Tracy Parker was forced to marry into a rich family with tears in her eyes, and she was chased out of Mark's family. They also say that her husband was from a fake rich family, and that Tracy hated deceiving people and actually ditched her husband. But no matter what, I still like Tracy Parker. Cole told Lucia all the different versions of the story he had heard. I think that Mark definitely isn't a good person, Lucia said. Why? Because the world is a dark and bad place, Lucia said somberly. But isn't Dalen just as bad? Cole asked, aware that he was approaching a sensitive topic. Don't mention him, Lucia shouted. Cole thought to himself, so it was because of Dalen that Lucia was acting so strange today. You offended Dalen? Cole guessed. What do you mean I offended him? He obviously pissed me off, Lucia snapped. Cole immediately sighed, acting like Lucia didn't know what was going on. That's not right. You weren't there. You still don't know anything. How can you say that I was in the wrong? Lucia was unhappy. Cole was tired of Lucia's complaining. Can't you see how nice Dalen is to you? The things you eat and wear are all the best. I'm afraid that if you don't eat well, he will bring you food every day. What kind of man has the patience to bring you back time and again? Just be content with what you have. To think that someone who was so favored would feel so unlucky. Knocking on the door of the office, Lucia's assistant walked in. Boss, your lunch is here. Lucia's expression changed and she slapped the table and stood up. I won't eat it. If you dare to bring it in, I'll throw it in the bin. The waiter, who had just entered, was so shocked that he stood there motionlessly. He looked at Lucia, who seemed like she was about to climb onto her desk and explode in anger. Lucia sat on the chair with a calm expression. It was as if she had never been angry. Take it away. I won't eat it. 
Lucia repeated slowly. Back at the Patrick's family company, the matter of Lucia's refusal to eat had reached Dalen's ears. His face instantly turned cold, and even the air around him was frozen. Dalen, who was sitting in his study, stood up. His anger prevented him from sitting calmly. He walked out. Coincidentally, Axel came over. Seeing Dalen's gloomy face, he called out to him. Dalen! Dalen did not respond. He looked at Axel with an even colder gaze than before and walked past him. Axel looked in the direction that Dalen disappeared to and slightly frowned. What happened to him? Axel hadn't offended him, right? But it felt as if the cold gaze was directed at him. When he came back to his senses, he saw his father, Robert, walking over. Come to my office, Robert commanded. Axel went over. He knew they didn't have to worry about being overheard when they spoke in his office. Does this feel wrong? Robert asked. What do you mean? Axel had no idea what he could be talking about. I'm talking about how Dalen looks down on everyone. Robert couldn't believe how his son was so dumb. He's probably just in a bad mood, Axel said with his eyes focused. And he treated you like this just because he's in a bad mood? Rubbish! He ignored you! Robert shouted. What are you trying to say? Axel's face was calm. Compared to Robert's excited mood, he seemed to be fine and not bothered by Dalen's attitude. It seemed that whatever Dalen did to him, he would always be calm. What I want to tell you is, even if you are above everyone else, you are still a subject to him. You don't have to put up with him. Do you understand what I mean? Robert asked. You want me to take over his position? Axel guessed. Why not? You are no worse than Dalen. If you have any ambition, then work on it to make sure that this company will become yours. Robert exclaimed. And what would happen to Dalen? Axel had a soft spot for Dalen and was always worried about him. Robert was momentarily silenced. After registering what Axel actually said, he had an angry look on his face, as if he was enduring something painful. I'm telling you, Dalen will fall into my hands one day. Then I'll wait and see for that day to come. Axel smiled with an unknown meaning. By the time Lucia walked out of the company at the end of her day, the building was empty. She also felt empty from within, like a hollow shell. But she did not show it. She was constantly going back and forth, deciding whether she should return to her father's house or to the mansion. In the end, she decided to return to the mansion. Why should she act like she's in the wrong, running away from home in a temper? No way. She would return home. When she got back to the mansion, Lucia found that Dalen had already returned home. His car was in the driveway. It looked at her with a kind of haughty attitude, the same way Dalen did. Lucia walked into the hall and immediately saw Dalen, who was sitting lazily on the sofa with his legs crossed, staring at the TV and not her. From the moment she entered the room, his eyes hadn't moved at all. It was as if Dalen couldn't see her at all. Without any expression, Lucia shifted her gaze away and headed upstairs. John walked over. Miss Dora and Mrs. Patrick, it's time to eat. Lucia noticed that she had gotten home later than her usual time. She used to be able to take a bath before dinner, but now she didn't even have time to go up the stairs. After hesitating for a moment, she headed to the dining room. She sat down and began to eat, but Dalen didn't come. Finally, while Lucia was eating, Dalen walked over and sat down at the dining table. The two of them ate in silence. In the dining room, there was only the crisp sound of the utensils clashing against each other and the plates as they ate, as if each action replaced the sound of their own hearts. The atmosphere was dull and oppressive. John looked at Edward silently. Why was the atmosphere so strange? Edward didn't have any expression on his face, but he saw everything clearly. Lucia left the table first, 
followed by Dalen. While the servants were cleaning up the dining table, John asked Edward, Did they quarrel? I didn't hear any noise, Edward answered. I know that the young mistress did not come back to sleep last night, John said. I thought that she went to stay in her father's house, Edward said. In the bedroom, the space on the bed between the two people was vast. They had an unspoken agreement that they would do their own things and sleep well. After turning off the lights at night, Lucia was still thinking that her marriage with Dalen was a mistake. It felt like the space between her and Dalen was separated by a galaxy. She had to flap her wings to fly over. Lucia wondered if Dalen was having a hard time right now. After all, he had married a girl just because he wanted to repay his gratitude towards her, and this girl wasn't very good to him. Would he regret it? Probably. Who would give up the happiness of their entire life to repay a debt of gratitude? And he even refused to get a divorce. Lucia felt a headache coming on. What did he take her for? Dalen didn't need to pity her in such a way. That would only make her more miserable. Lucia fell asleep in a cloud of melancholy. She thought she would lose sleep over her thoughts, but thinking too much surprisingly calmed her down in the end. Finally, she felt still, like a lake without any ripples. But what choice did she have? Other than being calm, what else could she do? Even if the reason for their marriage was so far-fetched, she didn't have the right to say no. It was Dalen who held the reins in their relationship. It was like running in a dream when you're unable to get anywhere. In the darkness, Dalen opened his eyes. In the dark night, he could clearly see Lucia's eyes because they were darker and deeper than the night. He hugged her back. Lucia, who was curled up on the bed beside him, automatically leaned into his chest, unconsciously finding it the most comfortable position to sleep in. The light in Dalen's eyes changed. He whispered, I'm the only one for you. Do you understand? When Lucia woke up, she found herself in Dalen's arms. She woke up with a start and retreated away from him. Dalen opened his sharp eyes and his expression turned cold. Am I that disgusting to you? He was hurt and offended. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I could sleep somewhere else. Lucia did not look at Dalen's expression. However, this changed atmosphere suddenly made her feel very bad. She didn't know why she was sleeping in Dalen's arms. Before she went to sleep, she had obviously slept close to the edge of the bed. How did she become so close to him? Dalen got off the bed with his blanket and let out a long breath. He went to the bathroom and she heard the bath running. When Dalen finished washing up, Lucia was still sitting on the bed. The coldness of the room was still lingering. Back at the office, Lucia decided to not have lunch. Cole asked, Why didn't you have lunch today? I don't want to eat, she answered. <sighs> I say, can you not be so stubborn? Why did you quarrel with Dalen? Was it because you saved his mom and he knew the truth? Cole asked. Lucia glanced at him and nodded. Why are you fighting? Aren't you better now that you're a savior? What are you so conflicted about? If it's true and I was her savior, then he should have just given me some money. Why did he marry me? Lucia was so exasperated. She sighed and did not say another word. Lucia had always thought that Dalen liked her. Usually people marry people because they like them, right? She had accepted Dalen's controlling attitude and had even come to like him which made her very happy. She had slowly accepted Dalen as a person and as her husband. But the truth was, Dalen didn't like her. He was simply repaying her for her kindness. What's the difference between this and a business deal? What was there to be happy about? This was a marriage of gratitude. Since we don't have anything here, why don't we go out and eat? I'll treat you to a big meal, Cole said. What are you going to do if you don't have anything to say to me? Lucia said spitefully. What? Even treating you to a meal wouldn't do? Don't make it sound like I'm being petty. 
As the two of them were walking out of the company, a dazzling female star arrived. Cole's eyes immediately lit up. He quickly ran over and said, Tracy Parker, I really like you. I'm your number one fan. Can you give me an autograph? <laughs> okay, okay. Tracy gave him an autograph. Can you take a picture with me also? Cole asked, trying not to press his luck too much. Tracy Parker agreed. Cole gave his cell phone to Lucia. Quickly, help me take a few more photos. Lucia took his cell phone and pointed the camera towards them. It was obvious why Tracy had come to the company. It was obviously to find Mark. Lucia thought, why didn't she ask Mark if he would remarry Tracy? Either way, it was good for the company to have Tracy Parker here. It was like a free advertisement. Ah! Uh, Lucia, how could you? Cole crumpled to the ground in agony. Lucia frowned and asked, What are you screaming for? I'm screaming! Look at that freaking photo you took! Lucia took the phone and looked at it. The corner of her mouth twitched up a little. If it wasn't for the fact that she was afraid of offending Cole and made him think she had done it on purpose, she would have burst out laughing by now. The picture was framing two heads, but there was nothing underneath. It was like two balls stuck out on a horizontal line without even a neck. Did you do it on purpose? Cole asked. How about this? I'll help you take it next time. An even better photo. Lucia saved their friendship. Tracy was easy to talk to. She could bend or stretch to help her friend. Go eat by yourself. I'm going to find Tracy Parker. After Cole finished his sentence, he really left. Lucia was stunned. Was Cole really that mad at her? Standing at the door of her company, Lucia sighed and shook her head. A car pulled up a few steps from the curb. Lucia turned her head and looked over. As the window of the car rolled down, she saw Axel in the driver's seat. Lucia walked over with a confused look. Axel, why are you here? I am uh, looking for you. Want to eat together? Would that be all right? Asked Axel, opening the door. I just happen to have been ditched, and I don't have any food to eat, so yeah, let's eat together. Lucia was thrilled at the prospect of spending time with Axel. Get in. The corner of Axel's mouth raised slightly as he tilted his face. Lucia sat in the passenger seat and Axel drove off. What do you want to eat? He asked. You're the one treating me to a meal. I'm fine with anything, Lucia insisted. After all, he was the one who was going to pay. Hey, you're the boss. You get to choose, Axel said back to her. <laughs> then what are you in the mood for? Lucia asked. Hmm, I'll have to find a good place, Axel teased. Axel, I didn't expect you to be so devilish. Lucia was surprised. The only thing that could be seen on Axel's face was a gentle smile of joy. When they reached the restaurant, they quickly ordered their food and waited for the dishes to arrive. Lucia couldn't help but look seriously at Axel. Axel's eyes changed slightly. His gaze didn't shift as he looked into her eyes and remained silent. It was as if he wanted to let Lucia eat, and seeing her, he would be fulfilled. Axel, there must be a girl you like, right? Lucia suddenly asked. Axel picked up the cup in front of him, pinched the handle with his white fingers, and said, Why do you ask that? There are no other women around me. Logically speaking, you must have someone you're pining after, and that's why you aren't dating. Am I right? Axel did not deny it. Yes. Lucia wanted to guess who it was. Who is that person? Do I know her? It's not good to be so curious. Axel looked at her with a smile. Lucia pouted. What's wrong with being curious? What do you want to know? Axel sighed. I want to know what kind of girl she is. She must be an excellent girl. Otherwise, how would she be able to make you fall for her? I think that girl must be the happiest person in the world, said Lucia. Why? 
Axel looked at her. You are so gentle and considerate. There is no girl on this planet who would reject being cared for by someone so kind, Lucia said. What about you? Axel asked. Lucia was confused. I what? Do you like being cared for by such kindness? I... The words in Lucia's throat suddenly stopped. She used to like it a lot. She even wanted to marry Axel herself. But then this happened. She had gotten married to Dalen. Once she had chosen the wrong path, there was no turning back. The further one went, the larger there was divergence from the previous path. She could still see the other side of the parallel line, but the distance between them would only grow further and further. After hearing Axel say that there was a girl he liked, would she be jealous? She could only envy that girl. Who doesn't like that? Lucia pointed at the other women in the dining hall. Do you believe me? You could have your choice of any woman here. In that case, although that is a compliment, I will accept it as well, Axel said with a nod. It really isn't a compliment. Lucia was serious with him. Axel's smile faded as he asked, You should like my brother better. Otherwise, why would you marry him? Lucia's expression became uneasy again. Why are you talking about him again? It would be better if he had a personality like yours. After she finished, she thought about what Dalen would be like with Axel's personality. It suddenly felt weird because she was more comfortable thinking about Dalen being his original self. I do envy him, Axel said. What is there for you to envy? Lucia asked. Axel shook his head with a smile and didn't say anything. Lucia felt that there was only a slight difference in status between Axel and Dalen. Everything else was the same. Just as they stopped talking, someone approached their table. Lucia was stunned. She raised her head, but her entire body froze. Dalen was looking down on her with his cold eyes. Axel also didn't expect that Dalen would appear her. Dalen, are you here to eat as well? I'm sorry to bother you. Dalen's expression was cold and emotionless. Of course not. Axel smiled trying to remain relaxed and casual. But Lucia could see Axel's fear of Dalen because she too felt the same. Now she felt as if she had gone behind Dalen's back and done something wrong. But she had only had a meal with Axel. It was harmless and completely innocent. Dalen sat beside Lucia. She didn't dare have any objections, so she let Dalen take a seat. However, she tensed up. She just couldn't relax. It felt as though her body was stretched taut. Why aren't you talking? Didn't you say that you were happy just now? Dalen's uncertain expression could make anyone feel that they were in danger. Lucia said, We're done eating, actually. Dalen's sharp gaze made her words stick in her throat as she swallowed them back. Dalen looked coldly at Axel again. Why are you here? Bro, don't misunderstand. I just happened to pass by Lucia's company. I saw her standing in front of the entrance, so we went to eat together, Axel said. What did you call her? Isn't it inappropriate to call her by her first name? Dalen asked expressionlessly. Axel's expression changed slightly. It was not looking good. Lucia frowned and immediately turned to Dalen in displeasure. What are you doing? So what if I eat lunch with Axel and he calls me by my first name? You think it's okay? Dalen's eyes were cold as ice. I... Lucia was just about to say something when the waiter came over to serve the dishes, which stopped her from saying anything else. But she glared fiercely at Dalen, then stopped looking at him. You guys go ahead and eat. I still have things to do, so I'll be leaving. Axel smiled at Lucia, picked up his coat from the back of the chair, and left. There was no need to mention how ugly Lucia's expression was. Her face was turned to the other side, and her appetite for food was gone. Are you sad that he left? Dalen asked. Lucia remained silent. The next second, Dalen gently turned her chin. She met his eyes. Did you hear what I just said? 
he asked. Lucia tried to pull away, but there was no room. She suddenly grabbed the plate in front of her and threw it towards Dalen. Dalen turned his face to the side and the plate smashed into pieces on the ground. The other people in the restaurant watched this scene in shock. Dalen's face was terrifyingly dark. Lucia's heart shuddered. Her body felt like it was going to collapse. Who told him to come here and mess with her? And why did he say those things to Axel? Dalen grabbed Lucia's head and pressed his lips over hers. Ah! Lucia's eyes were wide open, filled with astonishment. The men and women eating in the dining room looked over in surprise. Interesting, said a man in the corner. Men are so strange, said a woman nearby. They had their own opinions about what was going on. Lucia was stunned by Dalen's sudden action. After coming to her senses, she pushed Dalen away. When Dalen let go of her, she was shocked and gasping for breath. Then he grabbed Lucia's hand and they left the restaurant. He got them into the car which was waiting outside. As Dalen dragged her, she was gasping for oxygen. So she just got in the car and was filled with anger. What the hell are you doing? Kissing me in broad daylight? Do you want to make the headlines? This was too shameful. With so many people in the restaurant, he should not have behaved like that. Lucia felt she had to hide from all society for the rest of her life. This Dalen was a madman. Looking at the moving car, Lucia was angered. Where are you taking me? To eat, Dalen answered. Can't we eat at the place we just left? We already called for the food and we didn't even touch it. Isn't that a waste? Lucia argued. No, Dalen responded. Lucia was furious, especially when she thought about what had just happened. I don't want to eat with you. Let me out of the car. You want to eat with Axel then? Dalen asked in an unfathomable manner. What does it have to do with him? Lucia asked. Dalen's face suddenly turned dark and he angrily said, Okay, so why did you eat together? Lucia was so frightened that she stuck close to the door and didn't respond. Did he need to be so angry all the time? It deafened her. Didn't I tell you to never come into contact with him? Do you think I'm not serious? Dalen roared out the anger in his chest. Lucia shrank at the door, trying to put on a brave front while shouting, Look at your attitude! Is this how you should treat your mother's savior? Dalen's gaze changed slightly as he stared at her. Lucia continued, Why are you looking at me? Since you want to repay me, your attitude should be better. I will decide how to repay my debts. Dalen lowered his voice. His black eyes were fixed on Lucia. Lucia's heart sank. Her gaze shifted to the car window and landed without focus. Isn't it always your decision? It's been like this since the day of the wedding. You don't need to do that at all. I've known Axel a lot longer than I've known you. If there was really something going on between us, it wouldn't have ended up like this. On my wedding day, I didn't feel certain that I would succeed, even if I wore a wedding dress and a ring. Because I knew he will recognize me, and he will not marry someone he doesn't like. Lucia said this calmly. It was as if she was talking about someone else rather than herself. However, in Dalen's eyes, it was as if Lucia was regretting the marriage, regretting marrying him, regretted that it wasn't Axel she had married. Dalen's expression was dark and gloomy, like the calm before a storm. However, Lucia's depressed mood made him not react to anything she said. He looked at her deeply, but his heart felt heavy as if Lucia's hand had grabbed it and was bleeding it dry. He also experienced crazy jealousy, thinking about Lucia and Axel together. After the two of them had dinner, Dalen sent her back to her office. Lucia got out of the car without saying anything. She walked into the doors of her company without looking behind. She sneered in her heart as she entered the elevator. 
Returning to the office, Cole smiled mischievously as he served Lucia a glass of lemonade. Drink it. How did you get the picture? Lucia asked. How did you know? Cole responded. Didn't I get a photo of you smiling at me? Lucia was furious. I poured this for you personally. Drink it! Cole changed the topic. Then go out and buy me some yogurt, Lucia commanded. What did she mean by making Cole work so hard like an ox? Lucia could have easily bought it herself on her way back. But no, she insisted on buying it once she was back and making Cole do it for her. Why didn't you buy it on your way back? Was that not more convenient? Cole asked. This is all your fault. I would have eaten with Axel if you didn't ditch me. If I wasn't having lunch with Axel, would I have run into Dalen for no reason? No. Cole was flabbergasted for a few seconds before he regained his senses. Dalen didn't do anything to you, right? Cole did not expect so much to happen while he was just eating lunch. It was like watching a TV drama. Cole wasn't worried. On the contrary, he was a little excited. Why are you so happy? Lucia asked when she saw Cole's expression. Do I look happy? Cole asked. Yes. Maybe it's because I see you now safe and sound that I'm happy. Lucia remained silent as she stared at him coldly. Why are you looking at me? I'm telling the truth, argued Cole. I want to know when you're going to buy me some yogurt. Cole's expression froze as he turned around and left to buy her yogurt. When he came back, Lucia put down the game she was playing and sucked the yogurt through a straw. While inhaling, she stared at her computer screen blankly. Lucia, if I tell you something, will you listen? I promise you will think that I'm such a loyal friend. Cole said carefully. What is it? Lucia asked. Tracy Parker invited me to watch the filming of her new movie. I said that I would bring you along, and she agreed. Cole was bursting with excitement. What does this have to do with our fight? You betrayed me when you ditched me for lunch. Lucia yelled. You mean you don't want to go? Cole asked. Lucia thought for a moment and said, I don't want to, but I will. What's the difference? Cole's mind was tangled up by her. Yeah, I will go because I am so bored. The next day was a double holiday and there was no need for her to go to the company and she did not want to stay at the mansion. No way.